podcast, Truth Seekers podcast. Buckle up, everyone. We're going to talk aliens, UFOs, ghosts, spiritual and paranormal from all of the three moons. Beyond your wildest dreams. Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and down, sad and stuffed! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited, delighted to be with you guys again for another amazing episode I want to say a huge shout out to everybody who is uh, listening to us on all the live streaming platforms out there. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to the chat. Everybody hanging out in the chat. If you have questions or comments, make sure you post them there and I will try to uh, answer them throughout the stream or uh, any questions for the guest as well. I'll try to uh, send them over his way. So shout out to you guys hanging out. Um, also want to say a huge thank you to everybody who is supporting this work via Patreon. This is a listener supported, listener funded show doesn't happen without your help. So thank you guys, uh, each and every one of you who uh, believe in the work and who have partnered with me financially to continue to do what I do. I enjoy it so much. And so thank you for co-creating with me. So all the good that comes from this platform, uh, you share in that harvest. So thank you guys uh, from the bottom of my heart. Shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Kim. Thank you, my friend Kim, for coming on. And shout out to Crystal cats for coming on as well you guys rock if you'd like to support head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker there you get access to my entire discography of music you get access to our thursday night school of the mystics which is something we do every thursday night at 7 p.m central it is the community aspect to what we're building here we do a lot of different stuff there um guided meditations getting into prayer um tapping into our spiritual abilities esp practicing prophesying in a safe environment uh what else do we do we do courses together a bunch of really cool stuff open discussion if you're looking for like-minded people community to roll ideas off of and ask questions and find people who are just like you make sure that you check us out on thursday night you get access to that for a dollar also if you've not had a chance to check it out yet my book is here spirit realm angels demons spirits and the sovereignty of god forward by jordan maxwell uh get your copy get your physical copy the audio book is available too uh, you can get that for free by going to the link that is in the description of these videos and podcasts the audible link audible trial you can get it for free you don't even have to pay i still get credit they give me a kickback if you sign up so uh, it's a win-win situation for both of us you get it for free and i get a kickback check it out audibletrial.com backslash true seeker get the audio edition as well because i read it Y'all wanted it. I didn't want to do it, just to be honest with you. It was a lot of work. It was hard work, a lot of editing, a lot of waiting. 
I didn't want to do it, but everybody said, we want you to do it. We want to hear it in your voice. Please do it. I can't imagine somebody else reading your work. So I did it. It's there. Go get it. Link is in the description. Uh, what else we got coming up? Got a bunch of stuff coming up, really. I have my eight-week program coming up, which is called the Path of the Healer program. It's uh, training people to do what I'm doing to train you, equip you in, in a small group and send you out. And so if it's for people who feel called to the uh, healing arts, spiritual uh, coaching, working with people one on one and um, needing a, a grid for that, what that looks like, how to step out, don't know where to get started. Maybe you're scared. Maybe there's some things you don't know. Uh, I'm going to teach you the ropes, everything that I learned from me just walking in my calling and everything that I did to get to where I am today to be able to do this and operate at this level. I'm giving it to you this. I'm mapping it out. I did this. I did that. I did that. We're doing it. We're doing the inner healing. We're doing the inner work. Then there's a business side. There's a teaching, training and equipping side as well. So if you're interested in that eight weeks with me, uh, go to truthseeker.com. It's called Path of the Healer. Click on that. Also, last but not least, December the 12th, we have our uh, reset, refresh and renew uh, event coming up. It is our retreat. It's our first co-ed retreat. So me and my wife are both going to be leading to that, leading that. I'm super excited. The men's retreats have been phenomenal. Uh, man, just so many memories, man. You know, I was thinking earlier about nostalgia and how like it's easy it's safe to live in the past and when things were different and reminisce on memories and stuff like that. But I think the key is making new memories so that 10 years from now we can look back and say, man, you remember when we did that? You remember when? And, and, and have these memories that we're making now that we can cherish tomorrow. I'm really big into that. So uh, we I've already these this year, 2020, making beautiful memories, meeting people in the community, people who've been watching online for years that they've been able to come to one of these events and uh and be able just to do life together. And it's been so amazing. So tickets are limited. There's six uh, tickets for the males and for the females as well. So uh, they go fast. So it's in December, December 12th. Go to truthseeker.com and you can get access to those as well. Uh, how fast was I? How many minutes? Seven minutes. Wow, it's too long, too long. My guest today, David Strickle. David, welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast, my friend. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. Man, it's uh, good to share this sacred space with you, bro. Um, been seeing, uh, I guess it's a play on words, been seeing your stream, you know, your live stream uh, for years now. And uh, and it always sticks out to me because as I'm scrolling Facebook or scrolling YouTube, I see you pop up, see your videos and the uh, the sacred geometry and the symbols that you have behind you. Uh, they always stick out to me and I, I stop in and I listen and I've, I've definitely seen your stream. And then we connected uh, on um, Debbie Garcia's uh, anniversary show that she did um, on the uh, uh, spirituality gone wild, connected with you there, sent you an invite. Here we are, man. Been seeing you for some years. You've been putting in work. How, how you doing? Good, good. Just uh, I, I love being on these shows and just kind of interacting with new people. And I have to say, I am very, very grateful that I can just pop on and just be and not do all the <laughs> all the prep work that I usually have to do to be on a show. I kind of like it. It's, it's I, the thing I love about spirituality going wild is I call it the wild west of spirituality. It's just everything and everyone and all these different belief systems coming in. And the common thread is that everybody can kind of set their ego aside and say, okay, I have my beliefs and they work for me and you have your beliefs and they work for you. And here we are sort of finding common ground in these teachings rather than this dogmatic, uh, you know, train of thought that, that exists in spirituality as much as religion. Yeah. That's what I love about spirituality gone wild. Yeah, for sure. And it's just about being lighthearted and, um, and, and that's what we do here, right? Know, know that everybody has a piece of the puzzle to bring to the table. And it works for me because I used to be dogmatic. I used to be, I come from a really strict religious background and street preacher, e e you know what I'm saying, evangelical um, evangelist, you know, youth minister and, and all that stuff. And we got pretty hardcore with it. So for me to, to be on that extreme, to come to this other extreme of love and light and acceptance and, ex and radical forgiveness and radical grace, you know what I'm saying? For everybody, um, there's a plumb line and it kind of goes right there in the middle somewhere. And that's where the truth lies. So just being open and honest about that. I love it. I love learning from other people and just really coming together saying, Hey man, what's working for you? Like what, like, what wasn't working, right? Let's talk about that. And then now what's working? And I can talk to you and I can talk to Debbie and hundreds of people now over the years. 
And it's like, wow, I'm going to get the best of all of these worlds. Like, I think that that's what we're doing. I'm taking the best out of Christianity. You can have the bad stuff. We'll take the best out of mysticism. We'll take the best out of this. The be- and we put it together, and it's who we are, man. So take the stuff that works. Forget the stuff that don't work. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we see a common thread in all of these things, and, and you kind of get that it all started in universal law. And then universal law, as applied to humanity, we have to sort of construct some human tools to, to utilize universal law in our physical realm. And those tools, I think, to an extent, serve a, a positive purpose for everyone. And then it you know, turns into commerce, and it gets a little corrupted sometimes, and, and then it can go off in these different directions. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, we all understand that we're all eternal beings, that source or God, or however you want to label that, is this super positive, loving, creative energy that flows through all of us. And that's the common thread. And then what pulls us down into negative territory is when we allow fear to creep in. So for me, abundance means not just money and material things and things like that. I use the term abundance very broadly. Abundance is, is whatever you want in this lifetime. Yeah. If you want more love, if you want better health, if you want an improved body, if you want more yeah. experiences, if you want more friends, all of that stuff is abundance, a big broad tent of abundance. And the way that we receive abundance in our lives really is trusting, trusting the universal process of creation. And you can't trust if you're also in fear. So eradicating fear from your life as much as possible. And we were kind of talking about fearlessness, uh, which is one of my favorite topics, because that's something that we're all, it's, it's sort of like we're on this lifelong journey of detuning the high, the, 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 the high level of the fear vibration that we're taught in this world. We, we are very, very controlled by fear. And the more we detune fear in our lives, the more our trust just automatically raises. And when you really trust the universe to take care of you, it will. Yeah, that abundance is big, man. Um, you said a mouthful, so many questions. If we can just get out of that, it's funny. You're talking about like not knowing what we're going to speak about and just kind of going with it. But in that, I've got so many points and questions for you, like, uh, you know, just the whole abundance and, you know, the abundance in your health and, and stuff like that. And I've seen the transformation that you made. You know, I've seen the picture, uh, a picture of you at 41 and then a picture of you at 51. And it was like night and day, like there had to be some type of transformation or this inner knowing of who you are, your life is in your hands and those kind of things. But you went through a, I'm sure that was a, I'm sure the the, the uh, physical uh, manifestation we've seen of that, as, you know what I'm saying, taking care of your body, your temple, the weight loss, the working out, that kind of stuff was a reflection of the inner work that was going on oh, sure. too. Is that correct? Sure. I, I didn't have, a, you know, I was uh, significantly overweight and, and weight is something that I up and down struggle with. It's just my vibration and it is, but the, the, you know, being 100 pounds overweight, I was 300 pounds at 41 and I, I wasn't loving myself. And that's really what it boiled down to. I, I, everything that happened in my life and my childhood and my mother disowning me and all of that crap, I internalized all of that and believed that story. And I, I hit 41 and I realized that, wow, I, because I've understood law of attraction my whole life. This, this, this thing that I now call the stream, I used to just call my knowing. And I remember prior to age six, understanding law of attraction. And I remember at age 14 in 1982, describing the law of attraction in great deal. I didn't know what it was called. I, in fact, I thought I invented it. <laughs> At 14, I thought it was my cool little invention that I could you know, believe something and have it, have it come to be. And it was working very well for me. But I didn't have any guidance in that area. And I utilized that for the next, what, 26, 25 years to focus on manifesting material things. Because I grew up poor and my, uh, my idea of happiness and joy in life was that, hey, I, I'm, I'm living without all of these cool things as a kid that I see people around me having and enjoying, you know, trips to Disney, new cars as teenagers, nice clothes that aren't hand-me-downs, being able to eat whatever I want. Even a trip to McDonald's was a luxury in our family. Oh, yeah. So to me, money and material things equaled happiness. And I, I ran with that for a good 20 plus years in my adult life. And I manifested money and things. And at 4041, that that 41 year old picture, I was in my million dollar plus home and I had a Mercedes and a Porsche in the garage and 
you know, all the nicest things that you can imagine having as far as just material stuff. And I got to that place where I realized that, wow, I've got all the shit that I thought I was supposed to have to be happy. And I'm not happy. I'm in a bad relationship. I don't like my body. I don't like, I'm making a lot of money, but I'm in a job that I really hate. I really stuck myself in that corporate. It's funny because I didn't even have an education. I was dyslexic. I didn't really get past the 10th grade and I educated myself but I ended up in a very high level corporate position because for some reason, even though I understood I could manifest anything that I wanted, I stuck myself in the space of the key to success was to have this big title. It's like I was trying to prove to the world that I could be a vice president of a fortune 500 company, even though I didn't do well in school. And I did, but I hated what I was doing. So I didn't like my job. I didn't like my body. I didn't like my relationship. I did. I was physically in bad shape with all of the things that come along with being that overweight. And I was addicted to Oxycontin. And I realized that, wow, I've really got to change something here. This, this, this attraction thing that I understand so innately, I have been misusing my whole life. And that really started changing things at that point. In the next 10 years, I spent developing these tools for myself to transform myself. And I did. I got out of the bad relationship. I got off of Oxycontin. I lost 100 pounds at 51 uh, I have to say was now was in the back. That was my peak at 51. I'm 52 now. And, and now with the lockdown, I've definitely <laughs> regressed a little bit, not much, but a little bit. I have no gym to go to here. Yeah. I'm not a big uh, home workout person. I love it's funny because I used to hate going to the gym and I, I really changed my vibration to where I loved going to the gym. And I, I'm missing that now. I'm really missing that. I can't wait for the gyms to open back up and, and get back into it. But I've been cooking and eating and just enjoying this, this flow of this time. And, and the, you know, the whole lockdown, the global reset that's going on is a very exciting time for me. I'm thrilled to come on and talk to people like you. For sure. Me. For sure. I, we, I did a little interview hangout with uh, some, some of my friends yesterday. And uh, I was just talking about how 2020 has just been amazing, man. We've been thriving and, and uh, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of new territory even coming into 2020 for me and um, owning my self-worth and like, you know what I'm saying, uh, knowing my value and things like that. It's interesting you you mentioned that with like using um the law of attraction to to uh create wealth and things like that um versus the other stuff the spiritual stuff right the um um spiritual well-being m manifesting friends all that kind of stuff there's it there's a lot of people who still fight with the idea that spirituality and wealth go together do you find do you, are you still having like coach people and help them get over that misunderstanding or we've seen it abused in the past where like like it's okay to go to disney world you know what i'm saying it's so like 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 almost yeah. like if if you desire to take your family to disney world you should be able to do it kind of thing you shouldn't have to do without and those kind of because I, I even had this i, I do run into people in spiritual circles disney. yeah i'm sorry you cut out no you good go you're through the i do run into a lot of people in spiritual circles and I, i'm on social media a lot and a lot of, uh, you know, yo, you're now you're talking about law of attraction. So you're just all about money and, yeah. and you can't be spiritual and talk about money. Uh, well, money is certainly not the, the, the cornerstone of what I teach. I, I teach inner happiness, awakening, self-love, joy, source connection, God connection, if you will. I teach that first and foremost, but that doesn't mean that you have to separate yourself from the material world because we all chose to come and manifest into this material world that we're in. And we have a system of commerce in place and it may not be perfect, but it is our system of commerce. And so if we chose to manifest into it, why are we demonizing it? Why not accept it and embrace it and allow it to flow, but just don't expect it to be the answer to all of your desires and, and, and be everything. That's what I teach is, is that yes, you can have all the material things. I still like material stuff. I live in Southern California, a very expensive place to live. And I like nice cars and I still like good food and I like travel and I like experiences, but I'm not depending on those things to make me joyful. Mm -hmm. That's so important because it's funny when I, uh, and I don't know if you want me to channel on here today or not, I'm happy to do it or not do it. It's up to you. But the, the stream has said before, and I think with Debbie, that you think that money is the answer to everything, but there's somewhere, there's someone sitting in a five-star resort right now, miserable about something so stupid 
you know, their steak is the wrong temperature or the wine yeah. isn't cold enough. And, and I've been around people that complain about stuff like that. Yeah. They hold themselves away from joy because their, their super privileged lifestyle has some little ding in it that they have to fixate on. And they're really holding themselves away from joy over the dumbest things when other people are really suffering. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's one of those things where the grass is always greener and you have to learn to be content. Like there's an interesting scripture that says godliness with contentment is great gain to be content with where you are. But still, there's a weird dichotomy there because you still want more. There's still more that you're going to be tapping into. There's a future. There's greater things ahead of you. But it's to be content while you're going through the process. This inner yeah. vision of knowing that, yes, I'm, I am stepping into wealth. I am stepping into the perfect relationship. But it, I'm step, I have better friends that are going to come into my circle. But still, let me appreciate the friends that I have now kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? To be content with where you are, to um, use it the right way. Not use it, but like treat every person, every situation with the, with the like, like show it its value, its worth. You know what I'm saying? While you're there. But still... You know, the harvest is plentiful. The labors are few just to understand that there's more coming. You need to position yourself for more. It's a it's a strange dichotomy there to to uh, to be content, but still desire more because they're like where I come from, the prosperity gospel and stuff. We used to speak highly against that. And they were like there was never enough. And maybe it's something with you with that, with the like just focusing on the material side. You never have enough. Once you get the Porsche, now you need the Bugatti. Now you need this. And now you're doing all this spiritual work, manifestation, naming it, claiming it, scripture, whatever it is, and you got it. But then, oh, okay, that's like the newness wears off and you want something else, another woman, another pill, another drug or, another, you know, whatever it is. And so it's this place of like not having enough that we have to make sure that we we balance to be content in all things. Yeah, right? and I, I was going to say that's a, that's what I was actually going to interject there is balance is everything because you have a, a soul consciousness, which is the eternal part of you, that is expansive. It's seeking to have these uh, challenging experiences to overcome and expand into a higher state of being. So, so that consciousness is expansive and your ego consciousness is also expansive. Your ego is always wanting more. And when they're out of balance and you are just focused on the soul version of you, and a lot of people, again, in spiritual circles think that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to come to this physical world and meditate your days away. Yeah. But we're in a physical world. There's a beautiful world to go and experience and enjoy and, and you know, yeah. and all of these things yep. that we create. And the stream says that everything that we appreciate is a physical expression of source of God. Someone put that channeled that that source energy into creating the Bugatti, into creating a, a beautiful meal, into creating even just beautiful natural scenery. All of that is source energy, whether it's human creation or our natural creation, it really is all the same thing. And if we have the ability to observe it and, and appreciate it, which appreciation and desire are a little different because appreciation is that is a beautiful expression of source. I would love to experience that. That's appreciation of, and you can experience these things, which means you're willing to experience them and release them if they need to be released. The desiring of them is very different. The vibration of that is, I'm not a happy person. And I think if I have that thing that I appreciate, that I'm going to be happy because of the having of it. And I need to grab it. I need to hold on to it. I need to not let it go. And then as soon as I get that, I'm going to realize that, wow, this may be happy for a minute, but now I'm bored with it. And now I need another one. Yeah. I need two yachts and I need three houses and I need 12 cars. And, you know, a, a, what do you, like you said, a wife and three girlfriends or whatever it is, yeah. I need more and more and more and more. And it never ends. And I got to a certain point with that in my life and realized that none of this stuff is working and I can go buy a second home or I can buy a third car or I can buy a boat. But right now I have everything I thought I needed to be happy. I was living in a you know, really upper upper class, but not super wealthy lifestyle. But from my poor childhood perspective, the big house, the German cars, the clothes, the great furniture, the fancy meals, that was everything. And I had all of that. And I, 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 I am very thankful that I stopped and realized that, wait, right now I have everything I thought I was supposed to have to be joyful and I'm not. So there's an answer somewhere else for me. And that's what I spent the next decade doing is going and finding that answer. And now that's what I teach. Um, 
is it internal or is it external? Do we all already have it? Like even then, obviously there was a there was unlearning and there's a whole process. But did you already ha- have what you needed to be complete? You just didn't see it there the whole time. I, I I believe that it's internal. I believe that that source connection, we are all strands of consciousness that are extension of that and it's in us, but we are born into a scenario by choice where we allow our physical environment to overshadow that. Our ego comes in and overshadows that consciousness so that we can come and have this contrasting experience of positive and negative because the ne- look what the negative stuff does for us. All of us that are in these spiritual circles, especially those of us that that teach, we all have all of these horror stories in our lives that brought (laughs) us to this space. One thing I noticed we all got in common. (laughs) Yeah. No, nobody is sitting on spirituality going wild and saying, you know, I just had this privileged life and it's just been great and perfect and wonderful. And I've always had money and good health. And my parents are are there some people though. Is here I am. Is this, is there some people (laughs) that are, that have that? Have you met any of those people? Like who have not had a bad child? I have some people that are into the stream that will say they've had a very gentle life and, and yeah. they just appreciate the stream, but they're not going into great depth with it. And that's okay. That's the experience that they are having. Yeah. It's just that the ones that are really going out on a limb to teach, yeah. I mean, we were talking about burning the bridges of employment before yeah. we got on. Yeah. Uh, I, I was joking that you know, there was a time I, I had a very high level corporate job for 20 years and made mid six figures reported to a CEO of a fortune 500 company. And it was an achievement for me because I don't have a formal education but I had to hide my spiritual side in that, that, that realm. And toward the end, I got to the point where I had transformed my life so much. I could not, not share it anymore. And I started my pot. That's why I started the stream of David podcast. That was three, four years ago. And I was still in the corporate job and people in my corporate environment thought I was nuts. And I absolutely was damaging my career and I didn't care. And about six months into that podcast, I just quit the job. No plan, no safety net. I just quit the job. I was living in San Francisco, very expensive lifestyle. And I just knew that it was all going to work out. And has it been perfect since then? Absolutely not. But it's it's always, my abundance has just always arrived for me. And it, it looks very different than I thought it would look. And it's so joyful in the experiencing of it. And I I really have let go now and just allowed this magical experience to unfold for me. And I could care less now. I'm never going to go look for employment again from someone else. (laughs) So if someone wants to Google me, they're going to see, you know, 10 pages of Google medium channel, all this stuff that I'm described as on the internet. I don't care. I don't care. And I don't care what my family thinks anymore about it. Uh, I wrote about them in my book and I have been disconnected from a lot of people in my life and I've made peace with all of that. I'm doing this for the people that are vibrationally matched to it. I know that I'm helping people and in helping people, I'm helping myself in turn. And I love doing what I do every day. I get to do what I love doing every day of my life and live where I want to live and exist the way that I want to exist. That is, that is abundance right there. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, Finding how to get that, whatever, even like with the whole, you know what I'm saying? Money thing of like money is going to complete me. Like there's, there's money money has to play an issue because like you got to keep the lights on you know you may have kids that you got to support you may have a family and so for you just to quit your job and start you know there is wisdom in in that i'd say because um but for me i think it was you know my story seems very similar to yours because i would was having these spiritual awakenings and i was a christian minister again and uh, uh i would just be open and honest about it you know we was doing psilocybin mushrooms and i'm like I'm having angels meet with me on psilocybin mushrooms and give me downloads about my destiny and what I, and how I need to unlock it and step into it. And I couldn't keep it shut. Like if I have the answers to like to how to cure depression, how to get a game plan for your life. I mean, I, they couldn't shut me up talking about Jesus. Whenever I first got introduced to him, I'm telling everybody I'm hanging out the car window, screaming his name down the road, like crazy stuff. But when I was doing that with, spirituality aliens ufo summoning ufos like going outside and praying and ufos showing up you know what i'm saying and i was just like i need to talk to somebody about this stuff not a psychiatrist but you know um as i was being open and honest my friends i had friends with me they were on the psilocybin journeys with me they were summoning ufos with me some of them got better than i was but um they would never speak about it publicly 
because of their reputation, because of their, their wife as a school teacher, whatever. Right. But for me, it was like, no, I have to, like, I can't, I can't hold this in. Like I need, first of all, I'm so drawn to it. It resonates with me. I get excited when I talk about it. I get excited when other people can add to it and they've been there and they, we can hold a conversation about summoning UFOs, right? We can hold a, a conversation about going deep and meeting the golden teachers on psilocybin mushrooms, you know? So for me, it was a thing where all my peers were like, don't do it, man. Don't talk about it. If your boss, I was working a regular job. If your boss finds out you're going to get fired. Yeah, you're probably right. But I couldn't hold it in. And so for me, back then, it was I was laughed at even in the church peers because I was still a minister at that point, you know, talking about psilocybin and stuff and aliens. And that didn't last long. Um, they kicked me out really quick or just ghosted you and told people to stay away from you. You're a witch or whatever. Um, but it was the greatest thing that I that how fear, could do. How people are so fearful about that that thought. And, and you're, you're not posing a threat to anyone by thinking – what you're thinking. You're not coming in with a gun and saying that you're going to, you know, wipe everybody out. You're simply coming in and saying, this was my experience and they can't just listen and, and allow you to have your experience. We're taught so much fear around anything that's outside of 3d that you're a threat now because you have thoughts that are different than the mainstream. Yeah. Well, it's, you it's are though, you're messing with their livelihood, you know, because if you're, if you have a church that's teaching one thing and then you come in and say, Hey, like you don't got to do that. Like the tithing, we was even with just religious stuff. We I had a target on my back because they would teach tithing and sat like God was gonna punish you if you didn't give them your money. Like you couldn't give it to another donation. You couldn't give it to a struggling mother. You had to give it to them. And and if you didn't, then God was gonna punish you. And they would quote scriptures and stuff. And we get to the bottom of it. And say, hey man, the Bible don't teach that, bro. These guys are taking this out of context because they want your money. And then we're taking from them. Like we're telling people to think for them, themselves and God loves you regardless or whatever. So you, you become an enemy. You do to them. You are in there with a gun. You know, you're, you're taking money out of, out yeah. of you're taking money from their family. Like that's their business. You're messing with their business. So they got to get rid of you. They have to, you know, ghost you and tell people to stay away from you with anything that's different. That's the weird thing. But the beautiful thing is now I, I'm, I roll with a lot of Christians. Now there's a big, big Christ, Christian mystical movement that's tied into the spiritual movement and um and we just celebrate what makes us different and our disagreements and we celebrate it we don't demonize or point each other out kind of like spirituality gone wild and what we're doing here just celebrating the things that make us different and knowing that there's something beautiful in it you know yeah we know that the stream says that that every, every thought every Every being serves a purpose, even the ones that we don't understand or agree with at all. For all sure. of it serves a purpose yep. in the expansion of the universe and creation. But from a human perspective, I always say that whatever you're doing, if it works for you, that's great. The only place I would recommend drawing a line is that dogma of this is the only way. Yeah. We are right. Everyone else is wrong. Yeah. And it, that never made sense to me. In fact, I was asked to leave uh, Sunday school in the fourth grade because I was questioning dinosaurs and things like that. Like, well, why? Why is this not in the Bible? If this, you know, this has been discovered and we have these these fossils and maybe it's because the Bible was written at a time that that had not been discovered yet. So maybe the Bible's not completely, <laughs> you know, the word of God. Maybe yeah. it's the word of God is interpreted by man and maybe it's been reinterpreted. But I, I also knew that I was gay at a very young age. So that was such a gift for me because that made me question everything because I knew that I was what I was and that I was what I was via creation and there was nothing wrong with it. I knew that early on and that was great because a lot of gay people don't know that they absorb this, their evil idea and internalize that and it really messes them up. But I knew that. So that caused me to question everything. Whereas my older brother, we were raised in a very religious uh, scenario. My older brother never questioned anything. And you know, now we're in our fifties and he's led a life that is what I would call dutiful. And he's not a happy guy. Yeah. He's just not. Every time I'm around him, he's, and I don't see him much, but when I, when I am, he's, he's, he's very regretful of how his life has, has played out because he's always lived his life to please someone else and take care of someone else. And I think he looks at me and, and admiration that I live my life however the hell I want to live it. Yeah. And I have a sadness for him because of that. But again, that was the path that he chose. So it's okay. And, and there are certainly people that are worse off than my brother, but 
it, that 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 dogma of this is the only way and every other way is wrong. That is always rubbed yeah. me the wrong way. I've yeah. never liked that. In any <laughs> you could tell like you are spiritual. You... There, there's, you know, I, I've been around spiritual circles yeah. where, Oh, they're, they're meditating wrong. <laughs> this is the wrong meditation. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I had a, I did a, uh, and, it, and shout out to my friend. Uh, but I did a, I did a chakra clearing um, meditation where you you light your chakras up and you spin them. You light each one up and it's cleansing and it's doing energy work to each one. But the way I had them spinning, he said, was the wrong way. You spinning them the wrong way, you can cause a lot of harm to an individual from spinning them that way. I was like, what the heck, you know? And all these weird, you know, spiritual rules and stuff, you know. Yeah, you you know belief. I, I found that I teach this, and it and it has worked. It, it, belief trumps everything. Yeah. Your belief is where it's at, and all of these things that we have are our human tools, chakras, crystals, uh, angelic beings. There's an energetic realm that we are comprehending from a human perspective that's very limited in compared to our wholeness, and that's by design so that we can have this contrasting experience. If we came knowing everything that we know eternally, there would be no contrast in our lives. We would just come and live this utopian perfection on planet Earth. And that's not why we're here. We are here for the negative experiences as much as we are for the positive, because we receive growth in our negative experiences. It's, it's very, this is a cornerstone of our teachings is that the negative stuff is here to serve a purpose. And you use the term radical, radical forgiveness. And, and we use that a lot. In fact, a lot of interviews, I will dive right into radical appreciation, which is, I think, even beyond forgiveness. Like you can forgive someone or something in your life, but have you fully appreciated it? And, and the practice that I teach, which is called TYA, T-Y-A, it's, it's about trust, but you cannot get to the trust until you appreciate all of your transgressor energy. That's and good. appreciation is beyond forgiveness. It's finding appreciation for the worst aspects of your life. And that is radical for a lot of people to accept. But when you do that, you detune and depower all of that negative energy. And it really changes it. That activates an awakening in you because now you don't harken back to that awful thing that happened to you when you were a child or the time you were treated badly or the time that you got burned and you say, never again, I'll never be in another relationship again. I'll never start another business again. I'll never put myself out there again or I'm going to go on a, a show and then I'm going to, you know, have regrets that I went on the show and want it taken off the air, you know, all of that stuff that, that we know happens because people become fearful because they have this negative energy that activates fear within them. And when you dive into not just radical acceptance and forgiveness, but radical appreciation, there's nothing left for that energy to do to you. When you could say, wow, I appreciate that I was abused as a child and I found my unique path to appreciation of that, even though it was a horrific experience, I now understand it and I see it differently and I'm allowing it to serve me in some way. Therefore I can find appreciation for it. It sounds insane, yeah. but when you take yourself through that process, that monster, that demon is gone and mm -hmm. you realize that you have power over your demons. And you find and for the, me the, 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 like, any person it becomes a blessing. Yeah, like my demons, I'm, I'm thankful. Like I thank God, you know what I'm saying? That, that I went through this stuff and it made me the person that I am today. And without it, who would I be, you know, without those trials and without that character that was birthed in me through going through that stuff. And so those demons were a blessing. They were, um, now when you're going through it, it's not right. It's like, let me out. Yeah, going we don't want to see other people. We don't want to see children being abused. I get that. No. But is, is, is demonizing it stopping it obviously it's not and that's what i'm trying to share with the world is let's stop demonizing it and we can demonize it for a minute if we want and say it's horrible it's terrible how could that person do that to somebody of oh, that poor child i get all of that yeah but it doesn't solve anything so okay let's solve something by saying we are all here to experience the contrast the negative aspects and let's find understanding and appreciation of it because that is going to serve us. And we've all endured things. And, and, and those of us that have endured some of the worst things become teachers. So is it really a bad thing at the end of the day? And maybe if we start trying to understand it rather than just demonize it, we can actually solve some of these things. Because we're not here just to experience negative and just have negative be. We're actually here to solve negative and expand in the process of solving negative. 
So in our solving of it, we grow as beings, but we also contribute to the expansion of the universe by creating and solving problems. But there is a solving aspect to it. But when someone wants to stop at the victim space and say, oh, you're a terrible person, you're blaming the victim, how could they ever appreciate that? Well, that's negative energy that until you clear that, you're not going to move over here. And that's what I want for everybody is to come to understand that I always use my most extreme examples of people that I've worked with that have forgiven their children being murdered and found even appreciation for the path that, that their children took and had that occur. And I have seen the transformation in these people when they find that path. That is, it's such a transformation to this enlightened space of, of peace and joy and clarity, never saying that they, they love the fact that their child was murdered, but having a much higher opinion of it and understanding of it, which actually connects them to their, their child's energy in their completed state, which is an amazing process. So I, I do work with people in that. That's a, that's a very extreme yeah. example because that's the one thing we all think we can never forgive. But yet I've seen people do it and I've seen the peace and the joy and the connectivity to their, to their loved one that it brings. And so if they can do that, we can all forgive anything that's happened all the way to the point of appreciation. And that idea of radical forgiveness and radical appreciation is very foreign to us because we're told to be victims in this society. But when we change that, we really become powerful beings. Yeah, that's so true. Um, for, I think like there's a there's a. Um, there's a reason why this stuff works, you know, I, I, you know, my mind goes to Christianity, right? That's my framework and stuff and the, the forgiveness and forgiving yourself and um, Jesus giving you forgiveness of all the bad stuff that you've ever done. That's a start, right? Because you have to go in like you go. You, it goes deeper. It starts with just this beautiful forgiveness and experience and that and feeling lighter, like it's not on you and stuff. And then like but then go into um appreciation that goes a little bit deeper now and i would say not the majority of christians don't even get into that right there was like another route that you got to take to really go in and, and do the shadow work if you will right even though you've been forgiven and stuff why are you continuing to do it you know those kind of things um but now look at stuff like aa right and seeing the forgiveness process as well and how like literally the you know what i'm saying the 12 step programs and and receiving forgiveness knowing that there's a, a god that forgives you or an, a higher power that forgives you and then you forgiving those that you've wronged right similar stories in the bible jesus has forgive those who have trespassed you and if you want forgiveness then you need to offer it and and you know how you know how can you ask for forgiveness or demand forgiveness and and you're you're still harboring resentment and and anger towards others so there's we're, and we're getting in the universal law, right? I think both of those are different embodiments of these universal truths that can be dissected and, and, and pulled into any religion or any spiritual practice or whatever, and it works. Walking and forg forgiving yourself, forgiving others, um, and, uh, you know, seeing the power that that that, that has, you know, and uh, not feeling like a um, a victim anymore, not feeling like, like you're carrying the weight on the weight of the world on your shoulders for the wrongs that you've done. And for me, it, you know, that experience came in an instant, right? And they come for people in an instant. We're getting in the, the flow of, of the Holy spirit or uh, energy work or pranayama, whatever it is, and allowing the bliss and the grace and the forgiveness of God. That's for everybody. You just, and you're already forgiven. You just don't know it, right? Letting people know that gospel, that you're already forgiven. You don't have to do anything. We just need, you just need to know it and to really meditate on it. Think about it, ask for it because it's already there. It's a free gift and seeing the transformation power that just that has the forgiveness aspect, not, and obviously going into the inner work and wherever you branch off into that, but just the power of forgiveness, you know, the, very, very powerful because it de it detunes the demon and you asked earlier about, is it something that's separate or is it in us? All of that is in us. The good and the evil is, is us. And people take that very literally sometimes. And of course, depending on what version of the Bible that you're reading and who translated it and, and what you know, language it's been translated from and into and all of that, it, it sort of goes all over the place. But the common thread is there is universal law woven all the way through there. And 
you can find your path back to universal law through all of the metaphors and the translations and things like that. Yeah. But if you get super literal with it, then you really are thinking that, you know, I was taught that there was <clears throat> a deity in the sky that was God that was judgmental and needed to be worshiped. And, you know, that that's kind of how I took all of that. And that there was, uh, you know, Satan was in the, the center of the earth and was this, this evil force well, all of that really exists in us. And the reason that we all teach meditation is not to go out somewhere and find something that's separate. It's, it's to allow what already exists in us to emerge. When we take the fear and the resistance and all of those negative thoughts out and clear our minds, that goodness, that love, that expansive energy is there. And there's nothing wrong with prayer. Certainly prayer and intention are the same thing. Raising your vibration in this state of belief. And if, if you believe it, it shall be. We all create our own bubble of reality. And you're, you're talking about experiencing energies from other realms and things like that. All of that is here all the time. It's just you allowed yourself to experience awareness. It. Are you, and uh, you instantly. filtered it through you your mind in a way that you can get it. And other people haven't allowed themselves to do that. So they label you, you know, crazy or eccentric or whatever, but they're just not, they're not allowing you to have your experience. And you are actually allowing yourself to experience things that most people are holding themselves in 3D and not allowing themselves to experience. It's all here. And, and maybe for the better, because if it's going to cause fear, then, then your mind is automatically going to hold you away from it. Because we're taught that, you know, ghosts are these evil things to fear. I saw my grandfather after he passed away, just as clear as day. I can remember it to this day. And that was in 1976, standing by his car. Not only was he the ghost, his car was the ghost. Do we see was ghosts he really anymore? there? No, I was. Ex What's that? I said, do we see ghosts anymore? Because that was, you know, back in those days, you heard a lot more of that. You don't hear too many like legit yeah. ghost sightings these days, like in the 80s and 90s. And you heard a lot more. I don't know. Maybe we were less yeah, preoccupied sort of with screens. People through and they get bored with things. Yeah. Well, and that whole uh, uh, back in the eighties, seventies uh, and eighties, when I was a kid, I remember hearing a lot about you know Satan worship and things like that. You don't hear about that much anymore either. So it's, unless it's, it's from the like government, moved on to other things. <laughs> yeah. Now, now the government. Now people are realizing <laughs> the true evil is the government for sure, and I'm, they're not far off base with that yeah. for sure. But the the um, you know, the idea of seeing a ghost, I, I came to understand at a young age that that was my, the energy that was my grandfather's being that I was experiencing in a way that I could comprehend it. Well, and, did and that's it, did what it, that was. You did know, it interact with you? Standing there in, in his... Or is it a recording? Uh, it was just a, a look of, of loving and caring. It, was it really him or was, yeah, it, that time, or was it an impression of him that was like burnt into the fabric of, of our reality? That's a something I have when it comes to good. Right, right. It was, it was his, the best way I can describe it is his energy as it is attached to me because he's an eternal being. He's been many things beyond my, the physical version of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So that was my experiencing of his energy as it was connected to me. And it was probably my missing him and summoning it as much as his wanting to, his being wanting to continue to interact in some way. He was the only person in my life at that time that wasn't tugging at me. He would just was, he was, he was sort of losing his mind a little bit. And he just was where my grandmother had all these expectations for me. And my mother was going through a divorce and was very unhappy. And my father had left and was, you know, connected to another family at that point. And there was no adult in my life other than him. And then he died. And so that was my experiencing of that energy. I definitely, when I started being more intentional with my experiencing the energetic realm, I conjured haunted scenarios. I had a haunted house that I lived in. I lived in two places that I would say from the, the, the commercial, you know, Hollywood version of haunted were haunted. And, and they were, uh, one was in Orlando, Florida, and the other was in Seattle, Washington. And, and neither one of them were necessarily old structures. It wasn't about that at all. It was about what I was allowing and starting to allow on this journey of mine, kind of dipping into different energies and things like that. And then once I appreciated it and wasn't a, uh, wasn't afraid of it anymore it all just went away because i don't need that anymore i understand that it's all here and there's nothing scary about it there's nothing to be afraid of in it i'm not fearing it i'm not pushing against it so it's not part of my reality anymore now i can tune right into source and, and speak source and that's what i'm going to spend the rest of my life doing is yeah. that 
but we all have that ability. Yeah. So whether it's to speak it or not, we all have that in us to tune into. That's our intuition. Did you, uh, so did you get in, did you get into some dark stuff or some curious stuff for a while that kind of like made you susceptible oh, yeah. to different types of forces that were yeah, kind of overbearing? The experience in, in Seattle, um, you know, beyond the physical things that were going on, this was at the time when I was 300 pounds and on Oxycontin and all this stuff. Uh, and I really was just really wanting to know what was going on with me. And I'm a very self-taught individual. So I'm not one that's going to go take a class from someone else yeah. to learn to be a channel or a medium or spiritual or any of this stuff. I have to go, you know, pull from different things. I was seeing a lot of psychics and I was really, uh, really into horror films, but not the hack them up, you know, gross kind of horror films, more the supernatural kind of horror really? films yeah. where something that you can't see is creating something and then I took that and constructed a scenario like that in my own life where my house in Bellevue, Washington, outside of Seattle, I had all these things happen that were so much like the horror movies, lights turning on and off, appliances turning on and off, uh, black crows flying into the window, uh, chandelier in the foyer fell in the middle of the night, uh, voices, footsteps, yeah. you know, all of that commercial stuff. I even had a, a picture I was sitting in my, my family room one Sunday afternoon and there was, you know, these pictures that leaned back on the little stand and it shifted a little bit. And I looked over and I was looking right at it and I saw it move and then it flopped over forward right in front of me. And there was no mouse, no cat, nothing like that. There was nothing there. And it was a picture of me. So that was something that physically moved in front of me that wasn't just my encountering it that I experienced that... I could not explain at that time. And it was something that I allowed to happen. I actually created this scenario where it happened and it physically happened. And there was another person there that experienced it with me and experienced all of that with me. But our fear and my focus and my focusing the other person on it conjured it. We, we brought all of that into being in that scenario because we were, we were tapping into lower vibrational energy and creating a lower vibrational experience for ourselves. And you can do that. Yeah. but it didn't harm us. And that's when I became, I, I think I needed to do that to teach myself to be fearless of the energetic realm, that even the things that felt like darker energy ultimately had no power over me unless I gave it that power. And that solved that for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I started there, you know, um, the dark stuff and trying to get into whatever worked really. And it led me to doing a lot of different you know, meditations or trying to conjure spirits or whatever the case was that anyone that would show up or talk or communicate, like which one's real, which one has the power. And it led me to do them all, but like none of them worked until they all worked at the same time. And it like created this rip or this portal in the spirit world where they would pull me and suck me in, in and out of trances. It's funny you mentioned the movies because it was a lot of stuff that like I can go back. I can tell you certain scenes in movies. Like, yeah, you remember this one? There was a movie called Stir of Echoes. Kevin Bacon would be pulled into a trance and he would see ghosts. He would turn pale. He would shake and he, he would breathe cold. And that was happening to me. They would pull me in and I would lock up and I would see stuff and I couldn't talk. And I would come back like, what the hell just happened? You know, and it was so Did you have that happen before you saw the movie or did you see the movie after you had that happen to it's you? It's hard to say. Really, it was like right at around the same time. But it was weird because... Man, I'm getting chills talking about this, right? Because there was also I also like thing the 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 veil between this world and the other one was very thin for me at this couple of weeks or months. Um I at the very end of this psychosis kind of stuff I went through of trying to make packs with spirits, there was this weird spirit of like hypochondria that come on me that was still tied to the television because I would be watching television and we changed the channel. And I remember seeing doctor shows or somebody was in the, uh, somebody had brain cancer. Then another person said they had testicular cancer. And I had this, when I heard it, I had this overwhelming sensation that I had those things. I have, you know, cancer, I've got this. And it was just weird. Like you couldn't talk me out of it. It was demonic. It wasn't healthy. It was fear-based. It was scary, but it worked through me seeing it on the TV and then experiencing it in my life which was kind of strange too a around that same time that was at the peak though like at you know uh really after that it didn't last much yeah longer. i think it's, just, it's it's a step in the process and like everything else we go through this vibrational flow right vibration is high we know when we're up in high vibration we feel good 
that we dip down and we're down in, in, in less than high vibration and we can go all the way down into fear and judgment and, and, and you know, depression and all this stuff. But the vibrational flow is natural because of polarity. But what we do in these spaces is our own creation. And that's why I like to clean up the transgressor energy because when our vibration drops it. and we have the transgressor energy, it grabs us and, and holds us down there. And yeah. it doesn't have to do that. I, I mean, much yeah. like you, so we go through this Oxycontin, drugs, I mean, stealing, robbing, you know, robbing people and like all of that mixed with demonic like packs and stuff. So there was yeah. it, well, it, it's, it's something, it's that it's low something vibration to say energy. Something to say with the drug that use, causes man. you to do these things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the interesting thing is, is that I have come to realize that this vibrational flow, the down stuff that we view as negative actually is, is causing us to create something bigger and, and more evolved because of the down stuff. And what happens to a lot of people is they'll be up in high vibration and they'll start thinking, gosh, there's so much more. I'm going to start exploring the energetic realm. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to get into another, whatever it is. And you feel good about it and you're creating in a positive way. And then the vibration drops and you create problems. You go through this period where you're dipping into low vibrational energy. You're doing the shadow work. You're, you know, you're experiencing negative things. And if you let fear hold you there, you might stop and retreat back to where you were, but then the growth and the, the, the new creation doesn't occur. And if you move through that period, then you look back, as I know you do just from talking to you, yeah. and you see how that low period served your expansion. So you don't have to go back there again. And now as a teacher, you have had that experience that you can connect with people. And I do the same thing. I've created negative experiences for myself for a long time. I, I, didn't understand what people said when they were empaths and they connected with narcissists. And I had a little narcissism in, in my own being there for a little while. And I actually manifested a narcissist in my life and had that typical empath narcissist awful relationship for a little while. And I realized that I needed to manifest that to have more empathy for the people that have, have, uh, experienced that because even though I had this empathic ability about me, I was sort of turning a cold shoulder to people that it felt like a victim vibe when they said that they were in the snare of a narcissist. Well, I judged that. And since I judged that, I created that in my life. And then I went through a period where I realized, wow, I've actually attracted this scenario so that I can understand it on a deeper level. And then in the future, when someone tells me that, have more empathy for them. I actually, through my empathic abilities, created that scenario. So you needed to create, you needed to go and face the darkness that probably in your religion, you were told to fear and be, be very fearful of. And then you faced it and you survived it. And then you realize that, okay, there's nothing really to fear there because you go down into this negative space and the actions you take from down there are your choice. And you can experience that negative energy next time, know what it feels like and not choose to be fearful of it and conjure more of it. Yeah. Very healing. Yeah, for very, sure. Very healing to go and experience and a lot to flow. The scary thing is knowing that other people are there and they don't make it out though. Like I think I feel like I got lucky. I feel like you yeah. got lucky too. You know, I mean, how many people do you know that died of oxycotton overdose? I mean, I can tell you probably four sure. or five close friends, sure. you know, uh who have died o o from from drug overdose and uh you know that's the and that's where the empathy and the compassion comes from though to go back and to reach out to those people who are struggling because we did make it out and with making it out we know that hey there's a hidden path here go that path and you'll get out you know what i'm saying there is a way out you're not yeah. trapped at, at rock bottom this isn't your destiny there's more for you and um but that's the thing about it. i feel like it gives us a natural empathy to dance amongst those demons to not be afraid of them anymore because we've looked them in the face they, I've gotten bit by one. You know what I'm saying? It's not as scary as it yeah. is for other well, people. The, the best we have to offer is our example that we survived it and you can too. And another another thing, I, I love this, uh, this term that we use called zooming out, where you're re really zooming in because it's internal, but zooming out to that high perspective of non-fear and non-judgment, that, that God perspective, if you will, because that's how I understand source and God is not about judgment or fear or any of those things. All of that is human construct to keep people behaving uh, in a certain way within religions. So if you zoom out to that perspective of non-judgment and non-fear, even the ones who don't survive it, you know, the 27 club, the ones that die of a drug overdose at a relatively young age, 
we are looking at that from our human perspective of that was an awful experience. They succumbed to it. They got into the negative and they stayed. But really, they had their experience. They, their eternal being came and had a human life experience. And their experience was that, that they allowed that to, to end them. And there is actual growth in that experience for that soul. And when you start viewing life like that, suddenly life and death and tragedy and all of these things come into clarity of, wow, nothing is going on here that, that is this horrible, awful end of us thing. If we all believe that we're eternal beings having multiple experiences, then why is death so bad? And why is death at a certain age so bad? Why not just appreciate the fact that they came and they had their experience and maybe they didn't make it past 27 or 35 or 50 or, or whatever it was, but that doesn't negate all of the things they created in the time that they were here and they return to their, their wholeness and they, they get to come back and do it again and again and again. And I know that the idea of reincarnation may very well just be rooted in our own ego, but it just makes sense that we're eternal. We all innately know that we're just more than this. Yeah. I think and there is more than just this. It, it, I think um, for what I've experienced, it, it, like some of that people can use it to become really passive and say, okay, that, that's that, you know, they're, they're, they're just in their shit. That's just for them. Let them stay there as long as they want. They'll come to it versus us like wanting to go help them. Like, Hey bro, you're fixing to die, man. Like you're in a bad spot and I'm reaching out to you. Like, I feel like it would, it make us be more passive instead of that. And especially when you look at that with like the Christians and stuff who really believe in hell, like hell is their main message. Like that's why they're so vocal. Cause they th like the compassionate ones are going to tell you you're going to hell. Cause they really believe that you are. And that's a good thing. Could because they yeah. believe it. If the, you know, you know how, uh, and this is what Penn Jillette talks about, like how much of a, dis uh, you know what I'm saying? Bad person or despicable person could they be to know that you're going to hell and not tell you like, that's, that's a cold hearted individual, you know, to not try. So, um, but then like, even with that hell scenario, as I'm, pull back from the hell scenario there's a there's less um less urgency right to uh to 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 help individuals get through it or to get it right you know if, if they die whatever it's their choice they they have free will and they've chosen versus like hey man I, i'm here for you and i want to help you get get out of this right i feel like some people could take that kind of notion of like oh because even with the suicide thing and, I, and i've spoken out against this like i know it's some you know spiritual healers who are high up one day the next day they're like i'm gonna kill myself I don't want to be here. And they're like, literally got a gun and, and they're fantasizing about yeah, it. Well, you know, we, we all have this vibrational flow. All of us, you don't outrun that. So even if you're a spiritual teacher and healer, you're going to go down in low vibration. And if you, it, it's sort of like the more you work yourself up into high highs to, to do what you do, when you drop a little bit, it's very uncomfortable and it's, it's a space you don't want to be in. But if you're fighting that space, you're going to pull yourself down further and further and further. And this misnomer that we're spiritual teachers, so we never go down or we have perfect lives. Yeah. You know, if there's there's a lot of people that uh, I'm on TikTok now and TikTok is kind of like spirituality going wild. It's a wild west. And you get all kinds of trolling comments and, you know, mostly positive comments. But yeah. People just pick apart anything. You know, why yeah. can't you attract hair on your head if yeah. you're in the law of attraction? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And they're, they're really not getting it. They're really not understanding that none of us are perfect we have figured things out and we know that we can help people and we do help people, but that doesn't mean that we're perfect beings. We do dip down in a low vibration, but I think where we get ourselves into trouble is when we start trying to claw our way back up and judging ourselves for being in low vibration. Yeah. That's when you get people that are suicidal or that just can't take it anymore because they're absorbing all of the energy as an empath of everyone around them. Yeah. And they're judging it all of this negative. It's negative. It's terrible. And when it comes to allowing people to have their experience, it's not just stepping back and not caring. It's being empathic toward them and, 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 and giving them an example of how they can move out of it, but ultimately accepting it's their choice, whether they accept what you're offering or not and being at peace with that. Yeah. I think I was just, just bringing up the, the, the suicide thing, just because like the, the notion in the spiritual community is that I get to do it again. Like I get to push the reset button and just come back as another versus like, get it right now. 
Like you need to get it right today. Like don't yeah. jump. Like they and I've, I've I've we've lost a lot of people to suicide, right? And a lot of spiritual healers and people in this community, who are just you know, one day they're here, the next day they're they're not. And I don't want them to look at that as an option, you know, that you just get to reset and reincarnate as another. Maybe you'll get a better well, role you know what next the stream time. Says. You know? Yeah, right? the, the stream says if you think you're current, we're expansive beings, right? And we receive expansion by the challenges that we place in our paths. And we, we manifest as a vibrational match to our point of entry. And a lot of us say, well, I would have never chosen my parents. <laughs> I would have never chosen being born into poverty or as a minority that's suppressed or something like that. But truthfully, if we are expansive soul consciousness beings that are eternal and we're coming to have a contrasting experience as a physical being, then we're going to choose more and more difficult paths because of the greater expansion that's offered in it. So the stream has said, if you think your life this time is difficult, just wait. The next one is going to be more difficult. So the, the you're exactly right. The, the ending of your life to come back and do it again in a different way, you're probably going to manifest in something even more challenging because this wasn't challenging enough for you to, to push, push through it. So the beings that come and manifest as sick children or, or in poverty are actually highly advanced souls looking for that deep experience. And we see examples of that in these children that are born with terminal cancer or, or something of that nature. And they're, they never even maybe make it out of the hospital. You know, they live three, four, five years. And everyone talks about how enlightened they were. Have you, have you seen stories like that? It's mm -hmm. very common that yeah. this little child with such a bright light and such a ray of sunshine and such so at peace with their journey and they were so inspiring to everyone around them and how sad it is that they are gone now four or five years in. But you're seeing that example of that highly evolved being coming for that experience, manifesting in the path of that, understanding its eternal nature and being at peace with not having this perfect existence or this ideal existence as a human being, making peace with it, being very at peace with it. And, and we do see that and it is inspiring because at our core, we understand that that's really what we're all about, being at peace with whatever is. And that really allows you to expand and, and fully appreciate and enjoy life as it is. Um, we've been talking about the stream, right? The stream of David and, and talking about the stream says this and stuff like that. What What is the stream? The stream is, I, I have had this my whole life. I've always called it my knowing. And it was just this, I, I really had this heightened allowing of my inner knowing because I was really just left to my own devices as a child. My father left when I was six. My mother was very disconnected. I don't think they really wanted me as a child. I was supposed to, they had a son. I was supposed to be a daughter. They thought that was going to fix their marriage. It didn't. And so they kind of just ignored me. And so I was really left to just raise myself. And in raising myself, I always had this inner understanding of how the world operates, how law of attraction works, uh, what bullshit so much of our reality really is. It's a very cynical little kid. And I misused that, as I said earlier, throughout a lot of my life, because I really took that universal law knowing and applied it to manifesting money and things. And then I got into my early 40s and realized that I'd gotten it wrong and that my human ego overshadowed my knowing. And I used it in, in, in a way that didn't serve me. But ultimately, I saw how it did serve me because I created all of this negative stuff in my adult life that actually brought me to a place of being a better teacher. So I spent 10 years fixing all of this. And in that 10 year period, I would see psychics. Psychics told me that I was a channel and that was what was different about me and weird that I had this heightened ability to tap into source energy and really decode it from a human perspective. And once I discovered uh, Esther Hicks channeling Abraham, uh, that made it less weird for me. It really sounded like what I was receiving, yeah. but I got to a point with it where I realized that I'm getting this stuff also, and I'm even getting some other things that I'm not getting from Abraham. So I need to disconnect and go deep into my own teachings. I started writing my book, The Stream, Eternal Wisdom for a Better Life. And so I started writing that book. I started my podcast. And then I just decided that, hey, I'm going to share this with the world. And that's what I started doing on the podcast. And I needed at that point, because I'd already taught myself to speak it, I had asked for a name. And when I got to the level where I could literally converse, there was no name. There is no name. And, and it was very, very clear that we are, we, we are 
consciousness. And we're not even we or I or they or he or she or any of that stuff. We are consciousness. We are the consciousness that created the universe. We flow through all creation. We are flowing to you. And you have tapped into an ability to, to really get it. And you've taught yourself to speak it and write it. And in not being able to give it a name, I thought, well, how am I going to identify this? So I, I identified it as a stream of consciousness. And I just started calling it the stream. And then when I launched the podcast, I called it the stream of David. And so it's funny now when people come on when I'm channeling and they'll say, hi, stream, how are you? <laughs> you know? And it's, it, 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 we're human. You know, We have to kind of put everything into human terms. But all of these people that channel always seem to pick this male name that's, you know, of English or Latin descent and or Latin uh, origin that, that is just the name they're giving this energy that they are channeling. And that's okay. And there's lots of people I know that channel that channel something similar to what the stream is. But the stream is its own unique thing, just as Abraham is its own unique thing. I feel and like it has its own set of teachings and and it works. It's very practical. It's not flavored by uh, spiritual teachings or religious teachings at all. I wanted to strip it down to a very core message of, of source consciousness teaching universal law. And universal law is very simple. Universal law of attraction, like attracts like, and that is the process of creation. But there's also a law of polarity, meaning that our vibration is always in flux so that we're going to attract a mix of wanted and unwanted because the unwanted is a key component of the creative process that actually is what drives us to create new things and evolve. So once you embrace the unwanted, i.e. find appreciation for it, that's when your life really starts to change. Yeah. I was Very long answer that. to what is this? No, no. It's a I, would, I was thing just, just thinking about that a while ago is like, and I'm big on this, just uh, like, the, the like the creativity and, and the drive to make it comes out of a place of you being where you don't want to be, you know, and I know that, you know, now, now that you're not working the corporate job, the energy's changed, at least like how you get inspiration and how you continue to create and like the drive was different. You kind of made it now. Now you get to wake up and do it, whatever you want, do what you love for a, a living. Right. Versus being in this place where you had to clock into a job that even though it paid good, you didn't want to be there. You know, you would, I'd rather be fishing, you know, that kind of thing. And so now you get to wake up. The energy's different and you have to adjust on how to create in that energy versus being in a place that you don't want to be creating. There's a little bit more drive there. There's a, it's a little bit more easier, I think, to like want to do it. I, I read a, a um, my friend of mine, he posted his schedule for this week. He's in, he's in a job like that. He's working a job. He don't want to do it, but he's like posting like what time he, he wakes up meditation and affirmations and prayer. And then this, so he's like adding these things onto his life. He's getting up early so that he can tap into the affirmations that he can start working on courses or material. He can do things that are going to benefit his future. The, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and, and just seeing his schedule, because I had that schedule, you know, where you had you had to get up at like, literally like I wanted to go start going to the gym and I had to I had to clock in at uh, two thirty. That means I had to get up at one. I had to get up at one to go to the gym and I go to the gym and work out. And there's people that are working out. I'm like, is it y'all's morning or y'all's night? Like, are y'all have y'all been in here? <laughs> so it's like but it's like making that time It's the, the drive is different. You hear it on a, in a lot of music. Their first one or two albums are like, yeah, you can tell they wanted to make it. And then eventually it's just like they're just writing songs, you know, because they know how to write a song. And that drive is gone to make it. That that uh, angry teen isn't there anymore. And Green yeah, Day That's why the original music. stuff is always the best stuff in music. And then everything else is a contract that they're, they're trying to fulfill. And it's very yep. obvious. Or somebody else wrote it, you know, all kind of stuff like that. But it's that place of like, I don't you know, want to be about here. Your, your book earlier... And, and something I didn't realize until I wrote my book, and I spent all this time writing a book and I'm dyslexic. And so I need a lot of editing and things like that. <laughs> uh, and it took a long time and I'm writing my second yeah. book now. And that's going to take years to yeah. write and get out. But most people don't even write their own books. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that most of people, even spiritual authors hire somebody else to write. They, they put a bunch of thoughts together and they hand it off to a ghostwriter. No. And, you know, a handful of ghostwriters are actually writing most books. And yeah. when you were diving into the vibe of how difficult it was for you to write the book, 
it hit me that, ah, oh, this dude actually wrote his book, which is really cool. <laughs> I wrote my book too. And that's why it's, it's the way that it is. And it's different. And, you know, if some publisher had gotten a hold of it, it would have been, you know, conversations with God or something like that. I tried, which to, I heard was a very different book in its original form exactly, as well. Exactly. I tried to, I tried to work with a publisher early on and I just heard different st stories that other people's relationship with publishers, but mine, again, they wanted to change stuff. I love my cover. I mean, I think I sell a lot of copies just off of this amazing. I just love it. And they're like, we're going to get you a different cover. I'm like, no, you're not changing my no, cover. That's very cool. The it's best part cool. about the book is the cover, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah that, that, he's like, yeah, yeah that cover's not going to sell. We're going to get a different cover and we're going to charge you. You're going to have to pay one of our, I was like, I already paid somebody. No, nah, I got this. I got it. Yeah. Publishing is, a, it's, it's, you know, it's an industry like anything else and, and they're just yeah. in it to make money. And somebody said to me, well, you know, don't you want the prestige of a big name publisher publishing your book? And I said, you know, Kim Kardashian could write a book tomorrow about a pimple on her ass and the publishers would be fighting for it because she's got, you know, a couple hundred million followers. And I don't dislike Kim Kardashian. I'm yeah. just saying this is someone who has a couple of million followers, hundred million followers on Instagram. So she's going to publish anything she writes and she's not even going to write it. She's going to put some thoughts together. Someone else is going to write it. It's going to sell. They're going to make money. So where's the prestige in that? I would rather write my true thoughts, have it beautifully edited so that people can consume it and get it mm -hmm. and, and put it out in such a way to the people who are ready to receive it. And my ego wants a New York Times bestseller, but the stream could care less whether it's a New York Times bestseller yeah. or not. So yeah. it's, it's there to reach the audience that you're intending to reach and connect with. And, and, and quantity is not part of no. the energetic realm. That's a human ego driven thing. Even with that, all my friends, and obviously there's perks that come with it, right? With a publishing company and stuff. But my friends who have done that, they get like a dollar per book. I put a dollar, they get a dollar per sale. It's like, you did all that hard work. And if you, so if you sell a hundred copies, you get a hundred dollars. Like, there's no way. If I get, if I, if I grind and, and my community support and they buy a hundred copies, I want a little bit more to show for it than a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars is gone when I go out to eat twice with my family. It's like, there's, yeah, you it's know, and Amazon work. is a pretty, compared to publishers, Amazon's a pretty, it's very disruptive in the publishing world. Amazon's pretty generous with their split more so yep. than they have to be. Yeah. Because they own it now. They own all of it now. Yeah. I've, I mean, it's, uh, my book has just been, it was hard. You know, blood, sweat, and tears went into that. My wife edited it for me, and and she had a hard time trying to articulate, help me articulate my ideas and stuff, and what I was really trying to say with these sentences and stuff like that. And um, so obviously, if it was if she had a hard time, just think if I would have gave it to somebody else that I couldn't just sit down and really get to the bottom of what I was trying to say, so we can articulate this paragraph to to say what it means versus saying the same thing over and over. So. There's a lot that you that you lose there. I, I've met those people who are really a lot bigger names, where somebody listens to their teachings. They say, "Hey, listen to these four teachings and write a book on it." And so this ghostwriter writes a book based on four teachings, and he puts his name on it, and they sell it like he wrote it, and a ghostwriter did it. It's like, yeah, it's very it's very common. It's very. I was I was I don't know why. I've always been sort of a cynical person. I used to have the saying when I was younger. Uh, just because of my knowing, I would say bullshit makes the world go round. And then when I started channeling, I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't want people thinking that my channeling is bullshit. It's very, it's real. But if everything is bullshit, then nothing is bullshit because we all create our own bubble of reality. And there are people for whom the big name spiritual leader, that's the New York Times bestseller, if that book that wasn't even written by them transforms them in some way then it's fine that's that's the experience yeah. that they're allowing for themselves just as a spiritual teacher i'm working hard to build my own following my own audience and i have to tell you tiktok has been a gift out of nowhere <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm coming behind you man give me a give me a shout out a tag uh tiktok has been fun it's uh oh, get, get on to tiktok because it's uh it's, it's lighthearted it's, it's, it's a great facebook platform. is is murder death kill Facebook is the, is is nasty right now, and I go to TikTok and I'm laughing and I'm crying, laughing and I'm showing my wife. Yeah, memes. Facebook is the world is ending. It's terrible. It's awful. Yep. Where's your mask? All of that crap. Yeah. TikTok is is just the wild west of all kinds of shit. Everybody allowing their 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 own expression to come out, and if you don't yep. like it, it's just a swipe away yep. from moving past it. <laughs> and I don't even. I think I follow like three people on TikTok, yeah. and they're actually people that I know, but. I get a thousand new connections a day on TikTok. It's crazy. And, and people are loving the message. I've gotten good at the little one minute bite. I don't channel on there, 
channeling is something I can't do in one minute. <laughs> I can't control them in that way, but I can control my message in a minute. And it, and it really lands. And I've got some videos on there that have 250,000 plus views. Wow. And I'm like, wow, I'm getting these thoughts out to this whole new audience that I've never connected with before. It's a very cool thing. There's a whole thread of TikTok now that is spiritual TikTok. And, and the, hashtag the manifestation is ones, it blew up. The, 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 yeah. um, the little memes. Yeah, it's funny because that app was all about, supposed to be about singing and duets and all this stuff. And now it's about, it's about recipes. It's about, you know, young kids dancing. It's about, you know, old farts like me going to go sharing spiritual What's up? stuff. It's I don't know if you, you can, you can't see it. Nobody can see it. You had to go follow him. Go to a stream of David on uh, TikTok. 29,000 followers. Um, what, what What's up with the, uh, the uh, image, the icon, the green icon, the painting? The Shrek? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I have all this slick branding, right? And I go on TikTok and I think, okay, this is kind of a cool, younger uh, I don't want to have my corporate looking logo on yeah. here. And somebody that listens to my podcast made that uh, picture of me. They sent it in. And at first I was kind of like, why am I green? And my beard is blue. That's so odd. But then it really looked like me. And I thought, oh, she's like looking at aura. And, and so I'm like, she's seeing something that, you know, and that's what, that's how she's interpreting. And it's really cool. So when I joined TikTok on a whim, it was like two months ago, I, um, I just popped that picture in there as my icon and, and it seems to be working. So I'm just leaving it. <laughs> cool. Cool. See, I'm the stream of David everywhere, but TikTok is where I'm having the most fun right now. Yeah, sure. I know. Right. I need to, uh, I've got a couple of videos, nothing, just a little silly videos, but, uh, I have fun. I, it's taken up a lot of my time <laughs> lately watching other people's stuff laughing. Oh yeah. No, I would rather watch TikTok than television for sure. And, and you can get sucked in and spend a good hour just flipping through videos and you have to kind of stop yourself sometimes, but you know, I've learned a lot of things on TikTok. Yeah. It's interesting. And, uh, it, the algorithms, you know, shows you what you're watching, you know, like it, it yeah. kind of, it kind of tailors. Well, it's a cool platform because you. if you stop and watch something, you're going to get more of that. You're yeah. right. And yeah. if you don't like something, you flip past it, you're not going to get as much of it. You almost don't need to specifically follow unless you really want to follow somebody. True. Yeah. So, you want to make sure there's all kind of just the creativity, <laughs> the creativity, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and we have these, yeah, there's a chick now. on there. Her name is, uh, Israel Reed. She, she probably has less than a hundred thousand followers. Her voice is amazing. She does covers of Elton John. Wow. Incredible, incredible, incredible. She's going to be huge on there. I, I, I kind of feel like, I, wow, I discovered this person that no one's heard of and she's just this amazing talent, but there's a few on there like that, man. That's so much funny stuff. There's this one guy he's got his on there with his monkey. He just has a monkey and he takes his monkey out in public and is, and it's just there. He's filming his connection with this monkey and he's funny. And it's like, I just, I love watching this guy go out into the woods and let his monkey go. And his monkey will just, he'll come back to him. He'll go to Walmart yeah. and film his monkey. His monkey will go play on stuff at Walmart and come back. It's just I have to check that out. I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of, anything you want, man. Like you said, like the universe like appears to you and it becomes real. It's kind of like that with your social media and your feed. There was a documentary on, on Netflix and I forgot the name of it, but it was about the algorithms and how it's being swayed and ad revenue and it's being detailed because you've clicked on these, like, you you know, you can go deep into your Facebook settings and it, it they pick what, um, pretty much what religious preference you are, but what political affiliation you are too, without you even saying it. They know that you do an oh, angry sure. face on, you, you did an angry face on 17 Trump videos and you like 20 Biden videos. Okay. We know. And so they'll label you and they'll start curating content to you on those preferences mm -hmm. and stuff. And like, it's so weird of how like everything, it shows itself to you. It's what you like. You like Trump videos. You like this. It's here's more yeah. well, of it. Facebook's you, the sir. biggest marketing machine in the world now. Yeah. And it feels like it too, unfortunately. And it's, it's really hampered the experience of being on there. And now you have other competitors that are coming along. Yeah. And of course, the first thing Facebook does is try to gobble them up and acquire them like they did Instagram. Yeah. And I have to appreciate the fact that TikTok avoided that. But of course, now the government's even getting involved, wanting yeah. to control it, which is sad. And, and you know, talk about living in a, in a free country. And yeah. You start to yeah. question that when you see things like that. But you know, TikTok right now is, is, is relatively untainted and, it, and it's, it's still cool and it's fun. Enjoy it while it is what it is. You see Facebook your ad, but your like ad that. is, again, there's no five second rule. You just 
swipe past the ad if you don't want to yeah, see it. Yeah, you can just well, yeah, you can just pop off of anything. I'm like, you know, YouTube, you've got to sit through two ads now. I remember when it was one, yeah. now it's two ads on a lot of videos that you got to sit through before you can watch whatever it is you want to watch. But I don't have cable, so I like to watch YouTube just because of the I like randomness so much more than watching a TV program. Uh, even Netflix necessarily. So Yeah, I know I search my I don't I'm big into YouTube. Like I'll pull it up on the TV and my wife's like, oh, we're browsing YouTube, but there's some good stuff, man. There's some good original content that people are making. Like, um, you know, I, I vice big in the vice, like what they're doing. Um, just a lot of nostalgia. Well, think about it. We, we are all different. able to create content now through self-published books, through podcasts, through YouTube. That's how the world is going. Now we don't have to get into the club to get what we want out there anymore. And it's not some producers deciding who gets to sing and who gets to act and who gets to share their information and who gets to be on the radio anymore. It's, it's all open feed and you go out they're and scrambling. find your audience and do your thing. And you know, the powers that be don't like it, but they're not stopping it at this point. Yeah. You can't stop it. And that's, that's why it's good that it's monetized because the fact that they figured out how to monetize, it means it will continue to be. Unfortunately. Exactly. Exactly. The Cause they, cause they can get a cut now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as I can make money, then you can all go be as free as you want and share whatever. Well, you would you think want. that they would have left Alex Jones up, though. There's much ad revenue that he was spending and he was generating, you know, and not just him, but so many other which, people. What was he? Was Alex he uncovering the conspiracy, all the, um, conspiracy and yeah, 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 inciting. Yeah. Well, I think he was he was hitting too close to home for certain people that yeah. there was no amount of ad revenue that was going to be worth it because they were going to be exposed. I, I think there's some truth to some of that stuff. Yeah. Not all of it, but some of it certainly. Oh yeah, yeah. You uh, you got to play by their rules. That we'll be on here talking, and somebody will say words, or I'll get asked questions, and I'm trying not to say certain trigger words because I knew that I'm going to get demonetized um, if yeah. I say that word, you know. Or somebody's on here cussing a lot, and even though I'm cool with it, I don't care. Like, oh, they're gonna they're gonna pull the monetization. <laughs> like, you know, I have to go back and edit it yeah. or something, you know. They got rules, man. Yeah. You got to play well, by their rules. I, I always say if, if someone's putting content out that gets banned, that's the first thing we should pay attention to. Why is this being banned? Why is this being pulled down? You know, what are they saying that's so dangerous to the public that we can't hear it? Uh, and that's the thing that I, you know, I don't want to go too deep down the rabbit hole of a conspiracy theory because, again, we create our own reality. Yeah. And if you're going down the rabbit hole of some of uh, that, you're, you're feeding it. But at the same time, if somebody's sharing something and, and all of the stuff that was being shared, the problem that I had with it is that all of these people are being implicated and they're not speaking out for themselves. So if you are being called out on something and it's not true, why do we have all these people not standing up and say, if somebody said something about me, you know, that, that I was doing, and I'm not going to get too detailed, I don't want to get you in trouble either here, but uh, you know, if somebody said that I was doing something, you know, illegal or immoral or awful or horrible, you're not talking about I'm not going to be the first to stand up. Right? And- you're not talking about Nako, are you? Yeah. Nako? What's that? you talking about Nako? Nako What's Bear? that? Medicine for the people? I don't know if you were talking about his situation. He's a spiritual artist. No, uh, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't, there's a lot of stuff I don't pay attention to. So there's a whole lot of stuff I'm just not going to know. Uh, but I, I do, uh, I have people that are in my mastery program that have gone deep into all of that stuff and, and they like to talk to the stream about it. So I'm exposed to all of that and they're talking to the stream about it. Uh, and it is interesting, you know, we're living in, a, in an interesting time when a lot of things, everything negative of, uh, eventually bubbles to the surface to be detuned. Right. And we're seeing that, you know, we're seeing celebrities, you know, getting called out and, and, and these negative things about them, their images are being shattered. And it seems like the lockdown or the reset, as I like to call it, is causing a lot of that stuff to bubble up and presenting itself for us to 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 see clearly. It's always happened, though, as far as like, you know, your enemies, not your enemies, but your idols are falling. I mean, those are that's the story of pride. You know what I'm saying? And arrogance and money and nobody yeah. can well, touch me. And... The, the yeah. yeah. It all, I mean, pride cometh well, before the first fall. Big one so. Yeah. Well, the, the more the more you're on the pedestal and the more you're 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 praised in this world, the more people start to have to pick that apart, because at the end of the day, they understand that you're still human and you have flaws and we all go through this vibrational flow. Yeah. So they, they, they sort of say, OK, you can't be that perfect. Let's go find what's wrong. 
And then very often you uncover some pretty big things that are on. And of course, ego plays a role in that because you have somebody, and I'll use Ellen as an example, you know, that, that had good intentions, certainly with a lot of things that she did. And then she just blew up. People really loved her, got huge. And now she's saying that it's true that she had a rule that no one's allowed to make eye contact with her. <laughs> like, good Lord. You know, what happens in your life that you get to this point where you think you're so special that no one's allowed to make eye contact with you? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little nuts. So she sort of dipped over into that. She created her own contrast, though. Her life was going so well, she dipped down into lower vibration and dipping down into lower vibration, she created a disruption for herself. It's a process of creation. It's called being human. So all she is is human. And it just shows that she created this disruption. And what is she going to do with it now? Yeah. She can retreat and go and hide, or she can push forward and show that there's another side to her that people do like. Yeah. Right. With all of us. <laughs> this, this, is probably yeah. a, this is the side of me that you, most people don't like, you know, and sometimes it comes out on the podcast. If like somebody asks my opinion on a matter and I give it to you and like, man, I liked it up until that opinion, man. Why'd you have to go and ruin it for me or whatever? That's the thing. Like, we're so complex. You only get, for most people, you only get one side or you only get to talk about one thing or whatever. But then you find out other things and it kill. for some people, it kills the magic, you know, um, because you've seen yeah. somebody on that pedestal or, or you, when you think well, of Ellen, it, it's only the dancing, smiling, joking Ellen. It's not the tyrant Ellen that is off camera, you know. Well, it, it goes back to, to that, um, you know, the, 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 the gold standard New York Times bestselling spiritual teacher, blah, 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 uh, has this perfect image. And then, you know, you, when you're in the business, you start talking to people that have worked for them because you're hiring them to do something for you and you hear a very different story. That's why whenever I have something negative that happens in my life, I go right onto my podcast and talk about I had identity theft a few months ago. Wow. And I went right on. And of course, a lot of people are like, oh, no, you're teaching law of attraction and I'm listening to you, but you're manifesting identity theft. That's terrible. Well, no, it's not. Because what I'm telling you is, yes, I had identity theft. I found appreciation for it within an hour of finding out about it and solved it within two days. Yeah. And, and it was a flow that highlighted something in my business and my personal life that I needed to fix. And because I actually went and found appreciation for the precision with which these people stole my identity it was brilliant. They put a lot of effort into it. Hmm. I actually started appreciating them while I was on hold for an hour with my bank to solve it. And in my finding appreciation for it, it was solved by this happened on a Saturday at 7 PM by Monday morning, it was done solved all money back. Everything changed whole pass new password system, much more complex, but it's not unmanageable at the end of the day. And it wasn't a big deal. I actually look back and just think it was kind of funny at this point. So anytime something like that happens in my life, I always go and share it. But my ego side says, well, you want to be this big spiritual teacher, New York Times bestseller. Maybe you shouldn't share that stuff. And you need to put yourself out there as perfect. Yeah. Well, the ship has sailed. I'm not perfect. And I'm not going to put myself out there as perfect yeah. because we're not here to be perfect. We're here for the contrast. And that's what my message is all about. I'm actually setting myself up to, to be the imperfect uh, spiritual teacher so that I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> and, and you create that lane and it, it works out um i talked about it the other day but with somebody on here but um years ago when i was like you know doing my music my spiritual music and doing the podcast and it looked so professional it looks good and it looks like it's a big deal like you would a lot so with that being said a lot of people thought that i was doing it full time that i was just making good money off of music and making good money off the podcast and stuff but my reality was I, I was going to a dead a dead end job that I hated every day, and my only release, my one of the only times I was happy was when I was doing my music or doing the podcast. Uh, and I would tell people, you know, I'm a, a truck, full time truck driver. I drive anywhere from twelve to fourteen, sixteen hours a day. And my friends of mine were like, "Hey, man, you probably shouldn't tell people that because it kills the magic. Like they look to you like this guru. They look to you like this, but you're really a truck driver, you know." And it's like not being open and honest about it's who I am, man. I say, I get where you're coming from though. Cause but, but, like, I know it's sad. There's empathy. Like you want like your favorite rapper is a <laughs> garbage truck driver or something, you know? And like, you want to, maybe, maybe you'll want to support me now <laughs> that you know that I don't have this huge bank account because my podcast looks good and the music looks good. It doesn't bring in much money, at least in, in those days. Um, it was, I was struggling, you know what I'm saying? And, and I didn't want to be where I was, but you know, faking it till you make it or trying to only let them see the good sides of you, you know? Yeah. 
But if you're if you're sharing your authentic self with your audience, most people are innately going to get that, I think. And I think now more than ever, especially younger generation, because everybody is born up to speed with the time they're born into, they have an, a built in BS meter and they have no space for anyone who isn't authentic. People love authenticity now. And when you are authentic about your problems, about your challenges, about what your life really is, you're, go you're, you're going to connect with a whole different audience that just yeah. isn't looking for some false prophet of everything's perfect and everything's going to be perfect. And I had some guy that wanted to be on my podcast um, and, he, and he wrote some book about law of attraction. It was supposed to be the foremost book on law of attraction. And I went and checked him out and I'm thinking, I'm not getting the vibe that this person is, is manifested this brilliant life. So you're telling me that you are the end all guru of law of attraction. And you know, you're, you're, you're begging to come on a show to talk about, you're doing you know, all this different stuff. I just didn't like the vibe of the whole thing. It was yeah. just like, you're not allowing the flow and you're not, your, your whole vibe is not appealing on that level because it seems very desperate and forced. And yet your whole thing is about law of attraction. And people that, that understand the universal law of creation, the more forced and desperate and needy you are about something, the more you're just chasing it away. And when you just sort of relax and go with the flow and, and just allow the universe to take care of you and, and flow through your negative and positive, life is so much more enjoyable and you actually end up getting everything that you want, even things that you didn't know you wanted. Yeah. Um... That's the, that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, just being open and honest. I mean, things shifted for me when I became, um, authentic, you know, and, and just, again, we're going back to the story of, of who you are and how it's different for me. It's like, you know, whether it's talking about the psilocybin mushrooms experiences or talking about my faith in Christ, like my religious beliefs and whatever lane that is, I kind of made my own lane. Right. And um, but it was about being open and honest because both both of those sides would say, hey, you got to take one or the other. It's the Jesus or the mushrooms like it's the Jesus or the aliens. It's the Jesus or the spirituality. We wanted to say, no, like this is my story. All of it. Every single piece of it. And once I owned that and I wasn't ashamed of it or afraid of what you were going to think about me, if you're going to let me on your podcast because you don't like that. I mean, I have people even with my book, you know it's in it's weird lane as well because um it's it's in occult circles and it's in some christian circles and so the the uh the occult people i get in there by jordan maxwell one of the grandfather of occultism in in america um or grandfather godfather both of those terms that has been said um but the the sovereignty of god that god word oh yeah we can't this is a religious book there's too much religion so i've been like you know, shunned by uh, different people in those communities as well for, uh, you know, being either too religious or too occult or too mystical or whatever the case is. So, but it, whatever, here I am. This is me. It's a little bit of all of it, you know, um, yeah. owning your identity, who you are, walking in it, not being afraid of it and making your own lane. Nobody invited me to this party, so you can't kick me out. I made my own lane. I'm here. It's working and I'm not alone. There's many people with us. It is contagious. That authenticity is contagious. I was uh, jealous over it. I was covetous of it, of seeing people uh, get to wake up and do what they love for a, a living. I tell stories of like, I have a couple friends. Illuminati Congo is a good friend of mine. He's an artist. He does breath work. He gets, he makes a living getting up, working on music, leading breath work sessions, writing books. And I would see that while I was driving my truck. I was like, man, I want to do that the finances wouldn't line up. I would look at um, Joe Rogan and Joe, you get a little bit of everything from Joe Rogan. You're going to get his guru spiritual side. You're going to get his dude guy side. You know, you're going to get a little bit of everything, but it, it, he, it's him. This is who he is. It's his authentic self. And then yeah, he has a really good vibe. I, I, I like his show because I like comedy and I, he has all exactly. and spiritual but people. You could do both, yeah. right? You can hear both in the same conversation, just like this, like you're going to get both. And, and one thing that was real big for me is like the, our tattoo artists. I got a bunch of tattoos. I would go to the tattoo shops and those guys were so lighthearted. They get to, they get to draw for a day and they're making damn good money. I mean, you know, really good money, 
thirty thousand dollars a month. Some of them, you know what I'm saying, just by drawing on people. They're good at what they do, but they yeah. love what they're doing. They're making great money. They're lighthearted. They're telling jokes. It's like, I would. What would I give to be able to wake up and do what I love for a living? What if I got to work on a song? For, for the day? What if I got to wake up and, and, and create a program, create a guided meditation, do a podcast, talk with a beautiful soul like David, you know what I'm saying, for a living and, and get paid to do it and, and find a way to support myself financially? It seems so far away. But a part of that was in that authenticity of that is my story. This is what I want to do. And I'm going to create this lane so I can do it. And I did. And you did. And many other people are doing it now. They're seeing that it's something attainable. You may have to cut back on some things. You may have to get some smaller bills, take out a smaller mortgage, get a regular car or whatever the case is to, for the time being to get started. Maybe not, but it's possible to create that life that you, and I was jealous of those people. Like I was je- inwardly. I like, man, I want to, I want to hang out with those guys. <laughs> like I want to, I want to, I want to wake up and do that. But I used it in a good way. I didn't become bitter. I didn't become angry. I didn't become mad at God. You know what I'm saying? I believe, you know what? I can do it too. If they can do it, I can do it. And it may, may look a little bit different, but I did it. I'm doing it. And anybody out there under the sound of our voice can do it as well. That's the beautiful thing about it. The belief is everything. And I, when I jumped out of the airplane and, and left that job, I had no idea how I was going to survive financially because I, I spent money. I, you know, I had some savings, but not a lot. And everything just magically unfolded for me. And it hasn't been perfect. There's been twists and turns, but every twist and turn has caused me to go deeper and create something even better. And now two and a half years into it, I will never turn back. I will never go back to working for somebody else again. I will never do something that I don't love doing every day of my life. And it doesn't, I would rather, I, it's funny. I had a, um, a very difficult period for a little while in my business because I, I, I do generate a lot of money in my training programs, my Thai boot camp, And that got really slow for a little bit. And right in the middle of the slow period, I had a headhunter call and it was a half million dollar a year job in my old industry. And I told her I would live in a box under the freeway before I would ever go back in that industry again. And she said, wow, what happened to you? What's going on? I told her and she bought my book. <laughs> It was really funny that I, I was so proud of myself that I wasn't even remotely tempted at this difficult time where I had to sort of, you know, and of course my business was fine after that, but this, this kind of downturn in my business, I wasn't even slightly tempted to go on an interview or talk to these people. I burned that bridge. I'm very happy that I did. I do not regret it at all. Yep. And you want, you hear, you know, we, we hear your story all the time. It's nothing new. You know, people leaving those big corporate jobs and making a killing in money, but they're just miserable. Now they're, you know, they're not making anywhere close to what they're making, but they're happy. They get to wake up and and do what they love for a living. They wasn't put here to pay bills. They wasn't here to accumulate wealth. You find out that the wealth thing comes when you let it flow to you and through you, as long as you're continuing to step into that. I call it a stream, a river, not trying to hold it or hoard it but you're allowing it to come to you and through you. It just continues to come in increasing and in greater measure measures from multiple sources. Right? So that's, that's just, that's part of it as well. Um, and that's the beautiful thing. Once you learn these principles and you can start walking in them, you can apply them. They're, they're in the Bible, right? I learned the Bible before I learned law of attraction and any, any of the universal laws. So my, my mind is like fixated on the scriptures. So now when I'm reading about or learning about, uh, these universal laws. I'm like, oh, that's the scripture says this. Oh, wow, wow. It's all these little things here. Jesus said this. If I believe it, I will see it. Okay. You know, if I confess it, you know. Yeah, you tra- it, trace it all of that. The core message uh, is definitely all rooted in universal law. And yep. you know, a lot of people take it and twist it. Very different things. We see yep. that all over the place. You know, the, 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 the mainstream brand of Christianity has transformed so much since I was a child. Yeah, And I, I know we've got to wrap up and I don't have time to get into all that. It could be a whole other show, but it's, it's, it's very interesting how it's transformed uh, to, to this mainstream thing that I see now that is so far away from how I was raised in the church for sure. And it's, it, it is changing and hopefully it's changing for the better. I think they're losing a lot of power. Um, they're having, they're, they, they have to be well, it's more going in two different extreme directions. They have yeah. to be more accepting. Yeah, because the mystical church is uh, uh, um, emerging again. The church started as a mystical right. movement, 
and it's yeah, going people back are moving to away from the commercialized version back to the core and while other people are moving into this this crazy direction that has nothing to do <laughs> with anything that the, the jesus teachings were yeah. about the christ yeah. teachings were about so far off of that and in the name of they say and it's so like where did you get that that's not what i was taught you know so anyway yeah Yep. That's, I mean, such is life, you know, with, with all of it and um, just making sure that you do your part and what, what you get out of this mouth, what you get out of these teachings, listen, take it, take it to the bank. Um, as far as what you believe, cause people try to tie you in. Oh, you believe this, this, and this. Like, hold on. No, you have channelers on your show. You believe in that. What are you? No, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, cause you, cause you've watched a different channeler who, who has all these different rules and this is how you do it and stuff. And like, or, the th same thing with the religious people. Oh, you had a Christian person or you have a gay person on. You believe them. What are you talking about? Projecting on the people. And I, I mean, that's one thing about dealing with so many different beliefs. And it's just people, man. But it's beautiful. Yeah. Everybody has something beautiful to bring to the table. And um, we got to stop projecting. And that's one thing I found that the religious community does. And it's just people, though. It's religious people. It's spiritual community as well. Oh, you're a Christian. Oh, you're saying God or whatever. You know, you're not welcome here. You know, it, we have boxes, man. And I try to destroy those boxes that we try to put people in and people try to put us in, you know? Yeah, I, I always I always uh, go to the big tent. You know, everybody has their own bubble of reality they create. Everybody, if you find what works for you, you should go with that. The streams teachings are certainly not for everyone. Uh, and even they, when I'm channeling, they will say, if these words do not resonate, you're right to move on from them. It's not for you, at least not at this time. And there's no one size fits all. We're all unique, independent beings having this unique experience here. And it all fits together. You know, every one of us is a little little cog in that, that wheel that, that turns and, and creates life and creates expansion. That's good stuff. Well, David, if people want to check out your work, man, and uh, resonate with what you do, I know see you have some, some meditations as well. You got a bunch of cool stuff on your website. Let people know where they can go to follow your work and check out your stream and podcast and stuff. Yeah, I uh, the Stream of David everywhere, the Stream of David podcast, the Stream of David on TikTok, on Instagram. There's a Facebook page. Uh, my website is thestreamofdavid.com. And also I have a, a free guided meditation I give away that's um, I call it Source Connect. And it's backed by acoustical music from Christo Polani. Uh, he was a drummer for Air Supply. I don't know if you know him. He's, a, he's a exclusively spiritual musician today. And he creates this experience without using digital music. It's all acoustic and it's very cool. And his music, go check him out. But his music backs my guided meditations and my meditations are all channeled. So I have one called Source Connect that connects you with that source vibration that's already in you but it's a magical transformative experience. And if you text AWAKEN, the word AWAKEN to 760-284-7665, you get a link to go get that guided meditation for free. Nice. And you, there's some other stuff in there as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, there were some people here in the chat earlier who was like, yeah, I had a session with David. David's awesome. I love when our, uh, cool. I, I love when our, um, uh, audiences overlap because they do right you see, see some oh yeah that's one of my favorite somebody said uh i think it was debbie though shout out to debbie debbie's like yeah two of my favorite people hanging out so uh, shout out to I everybody love debbie. she's everybody watching and hanging out well I, david, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on and i appreciate the audience pleasure, and everybody sticking around and and, and well, it's a great conversation i do appreciate it good stuff man i know we're just scratching the surface but real lighthearted, good stuff uh you know enjoyed speaking with you i will say you know s seeing your stream and everything that, that you do i thought at first that you would have probably been um into like the stream of david would have been something had to do with the key of david the uh with with sound healing and stuff especially with the uh um, the uh, sacred geometry and, and stuff behind you as well, because that's a big thing in the mystical movements, like learning the key of David to get healing and stuff. So I didn't know if they, uh, you had any any information on. Yeah, nothing, that. nothing specifically to do with that. But I'm finding that all of these things that I'm drawn to, because I haven't gone out and received a lot of external uh, spiritual teaching, I think that's what makes the stream's message sort of raw and unique and 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 very functional. But I keep coming across all these other things that sort of put all these pieces of the puzzle together where I'm realizing that, yeah, this is absolutely part of a bigger, bigger puzzle. That's that I'm just a part of. I mean, that's what we're talking about the Bible and spirituality and all this stuff. It's, yeah. it's, 
you know, God source is saying one thing and people are just articulating it different. And so that's why you see these different things coming up for everybody. What's true for you is true for this person. Now, how you interpret and how you uh, uh, interact with that energy, apply it to your life. How you are you a victim or, or, or are you a victor? Do you learn universal law or do you reject it? Like it's for everybody to see what you're going to do with it. And uh, the beautiful thing is, is when we can do that stuff in truth and honesty and in love and not project or act like we are the know-it-alls. You know, I'm with you. That's one thing that I, I, I don't like. I, I can't learn under somebody who can't be taught. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I don't want to promote somebody who tries. They're trying to corner the market like you're talking about. This is the oh, this is the only book you yeah. need when it comes to law of attraction. You know, don't listen to those guys. They're a little off. Check out this book. It tells you why they're off. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, nobody I, has I, a monopoly on this stuff for sure. Exactly. I come from that in religion, and and it's in it's in spirituality too. So it means a lot to be open and honest. Well, David, appreciate it, man. Thanks for hanging out with me. We have to do it again sometime. All right. Thanks, Derek. I really appreciate it. Good, my here. brother. Many blessings. David Strickle, ladies and gentlemen, stream of David. Good stuff. Enjoyed it. Good talk. Um, speaking of Ellen, we mentioned Ellen, right? And she's in all this controversy. Somebody said here, we were talking about Ellen, la like laughing and all that kind of stuff. And so Robin said that the only time that you see Ellen uh, smile is when she is humiliating someone else. So that's interesting. It's, I, I can see that though. When she makes fun of somebody or I'm sure there's other times she smiles though, right? Or laughs when she sees a little kid's face light up when they surprise her with their favorite celebrity or whatever. Obviously, when she plays jokes on people, she's a prankster. She smiles too. I think we all have similar sides, man. Just again, being being letting it be in the light. But how much of that do do you, you know, let be in the light? That side of you that's a savage, straight up savage. You know, everybody, listen. He's talking about hearing those stories about those people that you see this beautiful picture of them, and but then when you meet them or you hear stories about them working with people behind the scenes, it's a totally different thing. Um, as far as like, not that you just get another aspect or another side of them, but you get a, um, a demonic side, if you will, a side of them that is evil, that is, is mean mean spirited somebody who's show is you know, trying to be a spiritual healer guru nice person and then you see the real them and the real them is a um off camera uh mean person that was said to me i, I know i talked about this a couple times but the uh there was a christian minister Juanita bynum she was a prophetess and uh i loved her teachings a lot about intimacy and prayer and stuff like that and i listened to a lot of her teachings really looked up to her seemed really spiritual Got the uh, spiritual music playing in the background and stuff when she does her uh, preaching and all that. Wears different. She would go out there wearing robes and stuff. I just, I, what they showed us on TV, I really liked it. Liked her teachings and stuff. But a friend of mine worked behind the scenes for TBN, the Christian Broadcasting, Trinity Broadcasting Network, which was the Christian channel. Um, and so he was the cameraman. And he had to film her a, a good bit of times. And he was like, I know I don't know if I tried to send him a video or something like that with her, and he's like, "Oh man, that woman, that woman's wild, bro. That woman's mean." I was like, "What are you talking about?" I said, like, "This woman is so spiritual, man. Have you not listened to her teachings?" And uh, I guess he hadn't listened to her teachings, but he listened to her. He, you know, met her behind the scenes, and she would be demanding people to go get her water. And when the water ain't back, she's like demanding that you're being too slow and talking down to people and all that. I've seen a lot of ministers do that. That's crazy. It's some they it's that um complex where they um you know think that they're better than people. A lot of them do it. Trump does it, you know. Uh, power, you know, celebrity, renown does it. You know, you're not like the rest of the peasants. Joe Rogan does it on his podcast. You hear stuff here and there where he's like making fun of people who change oil or he's making fun of people who work at Rite Aid or something and whatever. Um, and I would hear little stuff slip every now and then. I'm like, hold on, what's, that was a dig? You're digging on the guy who's changing oil? Um, you know, 
shut up and make my burger, those kind of things that people at McDonald's shut up and make my burger. You hear little jokes and little stuff that slip. And so you see these people, they get corrupted by power. They get corrupted by money. Trump, you know, you hear it coming out, coming out of his talk. A lot of people, they're, they're just different. You get into conspiracy theories and where these people come from and who they really are. Now that's a whole nother topic. Um, but, or le- unless they were just privileged or corrupted by power and money, you know, that could be it too. But a lot of these people operate and think a lot differently than we do. So to try to think that they have the same amount of empathy, that they have the same amount of drive or whatever it is that they've, whatever they've built, it, it does change you like your positions and levels and things like that does change you and it changes relationships. And I have relationships now with, or, or lack of with people that when I first started that um, I don't have anymore and they're not in my life anymore. And they would probably look at what I'm doing and say that I've changed and that the money or the podcast has changed me or something. But it's like when you're, when you're moving up, there's things that, that for me, it was like things I had to let go of and I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't participate in these things anymore. I couldn't let you uh, be so vocal about, you know, your dislike for me or, or or being so critical about me and making me doubt myself and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's a point in time where you just got to shut those doors, man. So people change and you got to make sure that you're changing for the better and not changing for the worse. You're going to change. There's people that's with you right now that next year they won't be with you. You know, whether that ends in a graceful way or a bad way, it can happen both ways, but it, they can't be with you. You know, it's it's sad, and I've I've uh I've had to um, go through that many times. Dealing with spirituality and dealing with religion, for sure, deal with it more than I want to. That's why I would rather just watch TikToks and tell jokes and be lighthearted. But when we start talking about belief systems and religion and all this kind of stuff, listen, you say the one wrong thing, they're gone, and many of them to never hear from them again. You'll never hear from them again. People that you hung out with. I had people who slept in my house, people that we went on vacation with, and I probably never hear from them again. We were close, but I said one wrong thing. I did something wrong, or they did something wrong, and then it's just over. And a lot of it comes from religion, religious ideas. Oh, you believe? I thought you said you didn't believe in Jesus no more. No, I never said that. I was under the impression that you wasn't a Christian. No, I'm a Christian, dude, I believe. Okay. They're gone. What? You know? It's the weirdest thing with religion and spirituality, too. It's both. So I hate it. It comes with the territory. It's part of it. God bless those friends who come into your life and they stick closer than a brother. And and they're willing to, um, you know, get past the facade of whatever this, you know, is that that other people see, whether it's a persona or whether it's a job or um, they just they're, they're there for you, not because of who you are. That was a a big one that I'm learning, and I, I don't know how I'm going to really learn it or really impl- uh, um, imply it or apply it, um, is the fact that, like, I meet a lot of, you know, I try to make friends with my fans. And a lot of people, you know, they be either become fans of the podcast or fans of the music, and then, like, I'm trying to hang out. You know, we're doing retreats together. We're doing a lot of stuff, but they don't always end well. Because when you when they become a really close uh, friend, and they were a fan, the moment that they're not a fan anymore of what you're saying or of what you're doing, a lot of times you lose that friend. And I'm noticing that too. And it's just, it's hard, you know, that the people come and go and realizing the, the real people in your life. So I I remember even back in the day having friends that I would try to run them off with the stuff I believe. I just hit them with everything. I remember just being on the phone with them because I knew that dealing with religion, they're just waiting for that one thing that they disagree with so they'll leave. And I was just like, I just was bearing it all. And it may be, you know, a couple of days time or whatever, but I would talk to one of my friends of mine and I would be like, well, you know, I really believe this. I don't believe that this is in the Bible. I don't believe that that is going on. I don't believe that. And it got to a point where he's like, okay. And he took it home and he researched it and talked to his family about it and everything. And and even though they, whether they didn't believe it or there was some truth to what I was saying or whatever, he didn't care. Like that, he wasn't there um, for that. They were like legit friends. Like, damn what you believe. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
Like I'm not here for that. I'm not, oh, I'm not here for what I can get from you or I can be seen with you in pictures and stuff. And it's so weird because I don't, I don't view myself as being like a, a big celebrity or, or nothing like that. But, but some people do, you know, and that's the scary thing because I want to be friends with everybody. Especially if we, like, if you're into the podcast and into the music, then there's going to be some things that we can connect on. If you like what I'm talking about on the podcast and you like what I'm talking about in my music, then, you know, we can build on it because I like it too. (laughs) Why not talk about this stuff? So for me, it's like, you know, I I found a lot of friends in that. But again, like once they're not fans anymore, then they're not fans. They're not fans anymore. Then they're not friends or whatever. So sucks um growth such as growth you know learn from your mistakes learn from the mistakes of others moving forward um you know your best days are ahead of you man don't let nobody put you in those boxes bust them open get out of them um you know lauren hill i've been talking a lot about lauren hill man because there's she did that lauren hill unplugged back in 2000 and it's so powerful She's got a song called I Get Out, and it's talking about I get out of all your boxes. And you're trying to put me in these bondage and these chains of of being this person who, who you think I am, and that's not me. So being able to break free from those boxes is huge. Also, confession and, and just living in the light, like we're talking about today, be living as your authentic self versus living as a persona or the perception or expectation that others put on you that you have to perform when you're around, like around the Christian people, I have to be a Christian around the mystics. I got to be mystical around those who don't believe in anything. I can't talk about anything. You know what I'm saying? Just being, being who you are around those people versus being who you really are, which is a little combination of all of it. I'll say, um, breaking free of those boxes so that you're authentic. It is, you know, what you see is what you get. And there's a lot to it though. There's no way you're going to get it in one episode. There's no way you're going to get it from one song, you know, or one time meeting you or hanging out or whatever. It's just finding those people you resonate with, uh, enjoy friendships, enjoy people while they're in your life for the, those mem- uh, moments of time and try to make good memories in hopes that they'll remain good memories. Don't let the good memories come back to haunt you, right? That sucks. I mean, even like if you have a loved one that passed away and so all of your good memories with them is like grounded in the fact that they're not here anymore, you know, and sometimes that happens with our friendships. We have our friendships of people who are alive, you know, oh man, we we used to do this or we watch a movie and you remember you was with them when you seen the movie and told jokes and everybody laughed at this joke. And then now that nostalgia is like bad nostalgia. Because on a memory that you have with that person that used to make you smile, now it's grounded in the fact that they're not here anymore. And what do you do to get past that? And how do you move on? Because it, it, it's a lot of people. It's not just that one person. There's 17 people who came in and out of your life. People grow. People change, man. Some people come into your life just for a season. And so I say I appreciate them while they're here. Make those memories. Don't take it personal. Right? The four agreements. It's not personal. It's not about you. Most of the time you represent something in their life that they're insecure about or they haven't come to the end of or whatever. Um, You know what I'm saying? So just being open and honest about who you are and your your truth. And uh, don't let nobody project on you. Shout out to uh, everybody hanging out in the chat. See some beautiful people here. Some comrades. Um, Richie, shout out. Benjamin. Benjamin is big on that uh, transgender thing. But what's wrong with it, though? Is it some? He says, Ellen is a male. And laughed at frazzle drip. Too horrible. As always, I want everyone to repent, but I cannot promote that being at all. Oh, you can't promote Ellen. No, I'm not I'm not promoting Ellen. I hope you... That's, see, that's the funny thing, too. People say that you're promoting them when you're talking about them. Talking about it. Or that, again, we're talking about the gay thing. Like having a gay guest on here. You're promoting... You're promoting being gay. No, I'm, I'm not promoting being gay. I'm talking to a dude who's gay. Like, that's his sexuality, not mine. Like, you're promoting gay people. I'm not promoting gay people. I'm promoting a person. I'm talking to a person. I'm not promoting anything. Like, you know, it's crazy. People project. You're promoting this. Truth Seeker promotes that. Why not promote it? If, if I promote it, they need to pay me to promote it. 
I want to make sure that it's paid promotion, that I get a cut <laughs> on promoting something, promoting the gay, gay gay agenda or promoting the transgenders. Or Come on, man. Listen, y'all better recognize, man. Y'all putting these people in boxes again. Get out them boxes. The gay people are getting out those boxes that y'all put them in. They're people too. They hear from God. They love God. Come on now. I know I got people who, who don't believe that. I got, I got people who don't believe that that's possible for gay people to hear from God or for gay people to, uh, um, and we, I, I, this got me in trouble the other day. You know, somebody asked me about the, you know, what are my opinions on this and on that or whatever. I try to keep my opinions for the most part on controversial things to myself, but this is, this should be controversial too, because it's a radical love that God loves everybody. He loves Muslims. He loves terrorists. You know what I'm saying? He loves prostitutes. He loves drug addicts. He loves gay people. Why? Because that's who I am and that's who you are too. You fit in one of them or you did at one one part in your life. You were a drug addict. You were a prostitute. Listen, who do you think Jesus hung out with? And who, who would you think he would hang out with today? So... With that, I'm going to say peace, peace, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Benjamin says, I ain't doing that, my bro. I ain't saying you promoting nothing negative. I know you're not, but but people will, will say that, though. You know what I'm saying? That even that I mentioned her name, that I'm promoting it, or people, you know, say it about the, the guests. They'll, they'll go and look look on, like, background stuff on guests that guests did, you know, 20 years ago. And that's, that's, that's too far. Let's say two years ago something that a guest posted on Twitter two years ago, and they'll try to, like, link me to that. You you had this guest on here who believes that, like, what? You want me to research their whole Twitter for two years to make sure I agree with everything? No way. I see Christ in the diversity now more than ever. If I see him anywhere, anywhere, it's in diversity. It's when people have reasons to oppose one another. It's when people have reasons to, 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 uh, uh, fight for discord for schisms and they put that aside to come together for the things that they do believe in love truth forgiveness honesty grace all of that that's when i see christ the strongest when you have people who come together knowing they have differences and say, you know we're not going to talk about our differences that's fine no 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 we got to come together because we're right you're wrong you got those people too but I, christ ain't in that not in that man he's in the diversity at least that's where i'm seeing him these days strong because that's my reality a diverse group of people the bible talks about whenever um moses led the people out of uh egypt out of the land of bondage right that he led them out as a mixed multitude you had a little bit of everybody in there there's a little bit listen colors races creeds backgrounds you don't think there was gay people being set free out of Egypt, they know all straight men and <laughs> women. Come on, man. It's eclectic. God is eclectic, man. You got to get over yourself. Hey, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Moody Ministries is here with us. Love you, brother. Uh, Benjamin also says, I love my prostituting sisters equal to all my sisters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, that's that's who we are. That's who we were, you know, at one point. I don't think we are sinners no longer. You know, we we don't live in sin, but um, we were sinners, you know, caught dead in our transgressions. But it's what 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 got you out of that? S did stopping doing that get you out of it? No, it was grace that empowered you to be able to stop. You couldn't stop without the grace. You couldn't stop without the forgiveness. You understood that you were for forgiven. And then that forgiveness went down to what the, the root cause of that manifestation like what causes you to manifest whatever it is that's a character flaw that's killing you which is your sin um whether it's a prostitute selling yourself short selling your body um selling yourself to drug if there's drugs that's eating you up tearing up your teeth you know what i'm saying eating your soul if it's drugs what is the root cause of that symptom like you have we, we, the drug is a symptom but it's something that's deeper down and i'm telling you like daddy issues fathers st stand up fathers a lot of that stuff comes up with prostitution 
find a lot of people that didn't, um, you know, have, have fathers in their lives. You know, you see a lot of people, um, you know, don't want to work, you know, they have no work ethic. Uh, people doing things now that, that selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? That comes from something being okay with hurting other people as long as you're serving yourself. That's big. Come on, you ain't y'all ain't never I don't know who I'm preaching to. Y'all ain't never been strung out on dope. Y'all ain't never hung out with crackheads. Y'all ain't never had a uh an a gay family member. Y'all don't come on man. I'm talking to somebody. That's for sure. Thank you, Matthew Condes, for the donation. I hope to meet you someday too, brother. Come to one of these retreats. Uh Benjamin says we are all forgiven as soon as we repent. I don't know. I don't know. I think we, I think we're already forgiven and we just don't know it. I think that's the, the, what makes the gospel so, um, controversial. It's like, how can a, how can a, a Muslim be forgiven? How could a sinner be forgiven? You're already forgiven. You just don't know it. You just don't know it. And so I think knowing that causes you, it gives you, meet it, it gives you the ability to repent it gives you the ability because like uh, repentance ain't even i don't even think that's on your own power man because pe- repentance is like not just at saying that you're sorry repentance is not doing that thing anymore and how can you do that on your own power so if that was so if repentance came before forgiveness that's putting the cart before the horse that forgiveness gives you the ability and the grace to repent and to forgive yourself. And that gives you the ability to stop doing those things that are killing you. If we could, if we could save ourselves and if we could repent, then we wouldn't need forgiveness because we've already figured it out. We've already learned how to quit smoking crack. We've already learned how to quit cursing. We've already learned how to quit stealing because we learned it. So there's no need for because you're not a transgressor anymore. But you need that forgiveness that empowers you to get yourself together and that's the message of the gospel it's scandalous but it's there for you the love of god that is for everyone regardless of race creed or sexuality god's god loves you with an everlasting love nobody could ever take that away from you and if nobody told you that today let me be the first that there is a god whose forgiveness is to you for you he forgives you he wants a relationship with you He'll change your life and um, make everything beautiful. All the things that seem to be against you, he'll turn them around in your favor. God's been working on you through circumstances and situations, calling you back to him. All you got to do is say yes. Father, I just thank you for everybody who's watching today, everybody hanging out under the sound of our, our, my voice and enjoying this podcast today. Ask for your grace and for your peace and for your mercy just to extend to them and through them father right now just releasing any tension off of their shoulders any heavy burdens and weights that they've been carrying to fall off now in jesus name thank you thank you thank you for peace ease and grace that your love is not contentious father i thank you jesus mighty name father you're so beautiful we thank you for the forgiveness that is our inheritance as children that you're not mad at us that you would embrace and wrap your children in your love right now in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. He loves you so much. And so do I get linked in with us, man. We're going to be doing the school of the mystics tonight. We'll probably start off by doing just uh, going into some meditation. I'm going to be prophesying and just leading in. We'll open it up for some questions and stuff a little bit more uniform tonight. Uh, I'll probably start off and just do the do the uh, meditation and stuff first. Then we'll open it up for questions and maybe open it up for dialogue after as well. So with that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you've not got the book, go get it yet. The audio version is here too on Audible. Um, check it out. Check out all the cool stuff. Just go to truthseeker.com. Bunch of really cool stuff there. Peace, peace, guys. We'll do it again. Peace. Yo, Well, that does it for
for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.